Good evening. Welcome to the March meeting of the Lake Forest Building Review Board. I'm Ross Friedman. I'm filling in for Charlie King, Chairman of the Building Review Board this evening. At this time, I ask members of the board to introduce themselves. Bruce Grieve. Michael Black. Robert Rita. Fred Moyer. The board is here tonight to work together with all of you property owners, architects, neighbors, and interested citizens to continue the long tradition that allows Lake Forest residents and businesses to work together to preserve the qualities and the unique character that make Lake Forest a special community. We recognize the personal importance of each petitioner's request. Our goal is to respect the needs and desire of property owners while balancing the interest of the community as a whole to preserve and enhance its architectural character and landscaped streetscapes. For those of you who may not be familiar with the Building Review Board, the types of projects that come before this board are those in which the property owners are requesting a variance to allow a home that is larger than permitted by the code, are seeking a demolition permit, and approval of a replacement structure, or otherwise involve the issues that could not be fully resolved by city staff. It is important to note that over 95% of building permits are issued by the city without the need for any board review. Thus, the board typically deals with the most challenging and sometimes controversial projects. The City of Lake Forest is committed to conducting open and fair meetings. To achieve that goal, the board has adopted meeting procedures and all parties will be provided an opportunity to speak. These procedures are outlined on the agendas available at the back of the room. This meeting is also broadcast on cable television. Speaking on behalf of the entire board and the city staff, our objective is to provide a review process that is thorough, fair, and without unnecessary delay. Our next order of business is approval of the minutes of the January meeting. Are there any comments from the board? Nope. Do we have a... Yeah, I move to approve the minutes. Second. So moved. This, our next item is the review of 101 Lewis Avenue, a considered consideration for the approval of a new residence with an attached garage on the vacant lot. Approval of the overall site plan and conceptual landscape is also requested. No variances are requested. The owner is Glatley Development, Lori Glatley, representative of Robert Gebelhoff and Ken Height. setting a record. This is our fourth time and we feel really enthusiastic that it will be our last. So um, we have, I just need to get back, I'm sorry, to the original screen that I might need help with. Oh, there it is. Okay. So these are the last three, the first three um, presentations, representations of the home that we brought before <coughs> the board. The last one is what we are presenting today. As you can see, there's been noticeable changes as we've gone along trying to address the concerns that the board had. Specifically, um, the biggest concern rested with the mass of the house that they felt was reflected over the garage. I don't know what to do with that. So, what we've done is we have lowered the roof line and removed the livable space over the garage. We've removed the dormers, and now the, the roof is down under the eave line. There was also some concern about the exterior elements um, being inappropriate for the lot, so we have minimized as much as possible to just cedar siding. Very simple, um, and in a few moments, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Jeff, who has given, is going to be presenting you with a 3D model presentation that will show the colors of the house, the schematic, and also address the other big concern, which is how this house looks when you're approaching from the south and addresses the neighbor issue to the south. So that's 
everything in a nutshell. And Jeff is here. Dan Horvat is also here, who is our landscape architect. There have been a lot of questions about landscape, so he's here to answer any of those questions you might have. Okay. Hello, everyone. Let me turn back here. Mm -hmm. So I thought we'd start with this is a, uh, a Google satellite image of the uh, area. And this is the property in question. Um, so you get a good idea where the streets are and other uh, rooftops. And then what we'll do is put in the, oh, excuse me, there's the house right here. So the proposed house is right here. I can give you an idea, click it off and back on again. So there's a lot and then there's a the proposed house in relation to the other rooftops. Here's a closer view. From there, we took the uh, landscape plan and also a topography plan of, the, of that area and made a 3D landscape. And so I'll turn that on to give you an idea. We'll minimize that. And this gives you an idea as I rotate out and down, you can see the road and the scale of the house as it projects in. And I'll come a little bit closer to show some of the details of the garage that Lori talked about. So there's the roof line. The new roof line in the garage is below the eave. It's all cedar siding. And then some more details on the opposite end. The only other material is a, uh, is a grayish stone that will blend seamlessly with the house. Anything to add for? Okay. So from here, um, we can take the uh, landscape plan and add in uh, existing trees, ones that will be remaining on the property. And so just to illustrate that, I can also pull in the landscape plan. So that incorporated, what we'll do is then I'll back out and show you the plan view. So here's the Horvat landscape plan. Uh, a lot of these trees have been, um, I have a, a model representation for this size and, and height. Um, we also have um, the new plantings that are shown throughout the property. And the, the dark gray areas here, I guess they, it's called the scrub. Is that correct? Uh, scrub area that will be left intact. Um, and then the rest of the uh, lightish gray area would be the uh, grass line. So if I take that out, we can now zoom in and come back to the eye perspective. And this gives you a good idea from the corner of the street. how the, the lot still remains uh, fully, I guess you could say, forested in the ends. And the new, new plantings, which I have not clicked on yet. Here's the new plantings, which is a significant amount of bushes, privacy screening, and ornamental trees to give it some color. To help also help with your the perspective view of it, we um, inserted a few cars and people, so you can get an idea. Excuse me, <coughs> how it looks in relation to a car and someone actually interacting with the model. Uh, focusing on what we also did was take um, the two corresponding houses next to this proposed lot, proposed build design, and added those in as basic models to give you um, an idea of the scale of those. This was uh, all done from the architect drawings. So um, everything on the 2D model, uh, 2D scale, the drawings were incorporated into 3D design here. So there's one neighbor to the, I guess it would be the, where is it, the west or south? South. And we can rotate around and get a view of the front again and the neighbor to the, I guess the east. Still lots of tree cover in between houses there. Does anyone have any questions at anything so far? Is, it, is that the end of the street over here? Yeah, so I put a couple people walking down the street. 
And if we came in and viewed them for, for their eye level view, um, I think the, the owners uh, wanted to enhance this scrub area. Um, I think uh, Dan, you can talk about a little bit. What are you you're going to add some other plants in here as well? Yeah, we've got you know shade tolerant shrubs in there, and it'd probably be viburnums, dogwoods, those type of things to enhance it. We're going to partially clear out the scrub, but not all of it, because the, the buckthorn actually stays green the longest and green the earliest. So it sort of serves a purpose for what we need here, and then clean out around the the good trees to give them room to breathe and that, and uh, also use the pines around the south side. So that screens from uh, coming from the south, and I think that's what Lori's asking. Like if you were yeah. driving south down. Yeah, can you yeah go over to this way. Over on this side here. Right. And these are the. Mm hmm. You just move that. There you go. Sure. We could um, go to walk view and excuse me, camera and walk. We can actually kind of walk down the street and then view as you see the, the house as you interact. You walk down a little farther. I think uh, one of the important things was uh, screening for the garage end and, and uh, to, to let the eyes visualize just the natural landscape. Excuse me. To your concerns previous meeting, we have added uh, more pear trees to the south side and uh, more spruce around the garage area there. I'm going to show those pear trees again. I can zoom over. I think the pear trees are referring to are in the uh, back of the lot here. Right. So a new privacy fence and the pear trees to help give some more natural appeal. Any questions? Anyone want to see different views or? Yeah, what's the distance, please, between the two houses as you're presenting it here? These two right here? They were on the plan. Do you have that plan, Bob? Can I we'll ask accept, that anyone we'll who's going to speak, please use the microphone if you could adjust that because they're not hearing at home. Oh. Thanks. Any questions from the board at this time? They're finished with their petition. Are you? All set. Are you through with your your presentation? Uh, I am. You have any yeah, more to yeah, add? That's no? it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Kathy, we are having a little bit of issues with the microphones, too loud and too soft, so bear with us as we try and adjust those from the back. Um, in your packet, uh, the changes made in this petition since the last meeting were reviewed. Primarily, it was the reduction in height, uh, the elimination of the bonus room over the garage. Um, over the course of, of several meetings, the overall petition has been simplified. Staff, uh, the staff report does include findings in support of the project. The, um, the, the landscape plan you have in front of you is still conceptual. We do need to finalize that uh, when we get a final grading plan. At that time, we will be working closely with the city arborist to uh, be sure we understand what vegetation on the site is being removed, what will remain, and to assure that the plantings, both the evergreen plantings near the garage and the uh, deciduous trees along the south, south property line and the fence are, are dense enough to provide screening, but not too dense to restrict growth over time. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, but uh, we do believe at this point that uh, we can move forward, assure that the construction drawings are appropriately detailed, and uh, we do recommend approval at this point. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite any public comments. Please. 
When you when you arrive, please announce your name and address. Sure. Hi, I'm Kate Lomo, Lo, uh, Kate Lomeler, neighbor to the south. Um, nice to see you again. Thank you for bringing the renderings. Um, that definitely helps me to see um, what I'm going to be looking at. And while I appreciate the changes that have been made, the simplification is nice. It still feels too big. Um, it feels very imposing um, to our home. I, I felt like you could really see that in the 3D renderings. Um, it's significantly longer than every other house in the neighborhood. If you go four blocks north, great. That's how big the house is up there. But in our immediate area, it definitely will be the largest, not square footage, but longest visible clearly from both the front north and south elevation just because of the way it's set on the lot. Um, so I am concerned how it's imposing on me. Um, and then I also am concerned about the, um, the landscaping on the south side along the back of the house. It looks great in the pictures. I know that the drainage reports have not been done yet and they are recommending a swale along there. I don't know how you can plant in a swale and if those trees will grow. So still concerned about it. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> any, any additional comments from? Okay, thank you. At this time, I'll ask the board members for their comments. Fred? Well, I think it's come a long way. Uh, it's been simplified. Uh, many of the previous um, <laughs> concerns that we have expressed and uh, here have, have been, uh, been met. Um, I think the, the fence to the south is just seven foot high is go, and the high level views uh, uh, mitigate the concerns about the length in my opinion and uh, uh, certainly the lot supports the, the size of the properties supports the size of the residents uh, and I don't find it to be out of out of sync with uh, the massing uh, now that it's been reduced so uh, that's what, those are my comments thank you uh, you know I, I concur in the sense that um, it's 280 square feet below the number at this point, which means it fits within the criteria. Um, there's issues within the staff report regarding the detail of the fence, the evergreens, the pear trees to make sure, as what Kathy said, that the density is there, but that's gonna be a condition of the actual approval, so I can recommend it too. Okay. Are you Mike? still in the comment or question phase? Yes. <clears throat> All right, I have a couple of questions for Ms. Gatley, I believe. On the, the letter that you wrote on the uh, revised statement of intent, just a couple questions I have for you. So it says that the, the house, the mass has been reduced significantly to, by eliminating the livable space over the garage and lowering the roof, and that it went from 3,772 square feet to 3,728. So it looks like a reduction of 44 square feet. Is that just in that bonus room? Is that just in what? The bonus room, is that 44 square feet came out of that space above the garage? I'm not the architect, but I assume that it did. I know that the bulk calculations were done both times and it came out much smaller. Not much so, smaller, so the but rest smaller of this time. So we're, you know, obviously, the lot allows almost 4,000 square feet, so at 37 and some change, we're well under where we should be, which is probably the more important thing. I did want to show, could you come up and help me, because it's I can't click on that anymore. Oh. Obviously, I'm technologically illiterate. Can you turn up the volume, please? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I just wanted thank to you. show you. I forgot to. I forgot to show you the fence. There it is. We went out and took pictures today, so there's the fence. So I don't. I don't want to have gone out on Green Bay Road in the middle of traffic for nothing. So there it is. That's what we are. The type of fence that we're planning on doing because it was suggested um, to us by staff that that would be appropriate for the lot. Okay. So just to finish up on my point, the. The footprint didn't get any larger. It just no. reduced above the bonus room. Okay. Right, right. Okay, and then uh, it says in here that you further reduce the mass by removing all of the dormers. You still have, you still are intending to keep the dormer on the east. Oh, definitely. We removed the dormers over the garage. That was a, a big concern was the dormers over the garage that we're adding to the mass. So those have all been removed. But the one that everyone liked over the study we kept because everyone seemed to have unanimous feeling about that, that that component of the design was very aesthetically pleasing. So we did keep that. Okay, good. And then you comment in here that the ho entire house is a very plain Jane. It is. So is it, 
Is it a house that you're comfortable with, or is it something that you, you, you're not <laughs> happy with? Um, I think that it's a fine house. It's not the house that I would have put there, but I think it's a good compromise between what the board wanted and what I wanted. And there's potential that if this house doesn't sell, I'll be living in it. So I do want to like it. Um, <laughs> but I think that it's, um, it's a good compromise, and I feel very comfortable with it. I wanted to be able to keep five bedrooms, which we were able to do by um, reworking that upstairs and getting rid of the livable space. That was really important. Would I have liked the outside to have had a little bit more charm to it or a little bit more of some type of architectural design? Yes, but I understand the premise behind the thoughts and I'm very comfortable with what with the product that we have. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and then a, a couple questions on, um, well, another question. The, the east facade was the one that was seemed to be the most uh, pleasing to everybody here and I notice on this east fa facade you've taken a window out on this plan okay let me just go back here hold on so yeah, there it is. yes that's because um, we put the bathroom there which before it was the bedroom and now there's a tub there in that location so we really didn't want to have a window there because of that okay Okay, and then uh, a couple questions on the landscape plan. So it says we have a final, not a conceptual landscape plan. Because I didn't <clears throat> understand the difference between final and conceptual, Kathy was nice enough to explain what that means. <laughs> I kept thinking it was because we weren't presenting the, the plantings and everything <clears throat> the way that they were going to look. And um, I thought that's what conceptual versus final meant. So is the, the plan that we have in here, is that a conceptual one? Or is this the is final? the final, as far as we're concerned, this is the final landscaping plan. Um, I think it is above and beyond what many of the other people in the neighborhood have for landscaping and certainly above and beyond what you would typically see for new construction. So um, I think it addresses all of the issues that have been brought forward by the board mm -hmm. as well as giving us a really pretty lot that has lots of different types of plantings, but all for the purpose that was desired, which was to lend privacy and shield this house from the street. Okay. And then I noticed on the rendering that the, the Bradford pears, three inch Bradford pears, go to the eve of the second story. I let you guys so speak to that. When, when would that get to that? 21 feet tall or so. So how many years know. would that be? Or would, or would that be right off the bat or 10 years or five years or? No, when they're a, a three inch tree, they're going to be very close to that 21 foot. Okay. Yeah, that's they're they're columnar trees. Okay. And then um, to the west. So the intent would be to go in there and <clears throat> remove some of the buckthorn, half of it, all of it or well, I think around the, the perimeter, the outer perimeter, you want to remove it just so it gives a cleaner look to it. But in the center of the woods, you want to keep some of that there. So then uh, you would go in and put in the viburnum and... Right. Right. But, you know, those plants, they, they obviously, they still need some sun. So they're, they're planted more around the perimeter where you can see them, and that's where they should be. Right. And then uh, the last time, or one of the meetings, previous meetings, there was some talk about that drainage swell behind the house and that wood chips would be the best solution for that. Is that something that you still feel is the best way to handle the, the drainage swell is to use the wood chips? Well, I think with the seven foot fence, it's gonna be hard to get turf to grow yeah. right in there. And I, I work a lot in Lake Bluff, so they're very tight lots there. I'm used to, working with the swales and working with the trees to get the screening we need. I don't see it a problem. If the wood chips don't work, we'll, we'll go another direction. It may end up be a, a small wash gravel, dry creek looking thing. Okay. I think that was just the concern that it would wash out. Yeah, yeah, if it gets a pretty good flow through there. Mm -hmm. oh, those are my questions right now. Bruce? Right. Um, well, as I've mentioned in the past, I. I think we, we've all said it in our own different ways. This project demanded maybe more compromise than, than might normally be the case, but uh, as I said last time, the lot is, is relatively unique to its surrounding space. So just on principle, my feeling is that, that you have to take that into account. Um, and I think you've done that. So 
just as one opinion, I mean, you talked about living in the property, and I respect that potentially. I actually think it, it looks nice. Um, I think it's a nice looking home. Uh, and I think all together, especially when the, the plantings mature and it feels more natural as opposed to a new build, uh, I think it'll come together nicely. Um, just to address one comment about the, the, the massing of the home and the size of the other property, I don't think anybody would disagree that that's a reality of it. Um, but the fact of the matter is that is, I think, a proper setback. Um, and if, it's, if it feels a little bit too long but you're with, and you're within massing, the only other solution is you'd make it shorter, but then you could make it higher. So I don't think there's really ever going to be a solution that would change the fact that it's going to feel as though there's something that's, that's um, uh, maybe more noticeable than what you had in the past when there wasn't a property there. But I don't think there's a, a, a fair solution for that. I think you have, you're well within the, the requirements to, to, um, to have the property where it is, as it is, um, and I do think the the adjustments and compromises made along the way make it a, a good property. Uh, in the spirit of good neighbor, we don't we don't get to enforce these things, but the fact that the neighbors have have uh, been diligent about coming in and sharing their commentary, I would assume whether it's you or the other people, I would encourage that let those things be settled out of here certainly. And if there are some thoughts and some a, a tree going up or something else, or as the fence goes up, I can't imagine that that good neighbors wouldn't be willing to do that. So with, with that as a, you know, added consideration, I'm, I'm supportive of it, so. I have a few color-related questions. The windows? Mm -hmm. What color are they intended? White. White? They, they look dark on that rendering because he's so creative, he wanted to make them so they were transparent. So actually, when you zoom in on those windows, you can see inside the room, which is so cool. I'm so impressed with what Jeff does. <laughs> So, um, so, so you could easily, um, but they are definitely going to be white. They do, they do look a little. And the gutters, too. downspouts. I'm sorry. The gutters and downspouts. The gutters and downspouts will be white too. So what really, is the, the intention is gray house, white trim everywhere. Black, black roof. Lights. Black roof. Yeah, kind of a, a gray, grayish charcoal, light charcoal, gray. Um, that tends to lend itself nicely to the color of the house and I think um, is appropriate. So probably sort of similar, pretty similar to what he's done there. There's the white. Well, are there any further comments from the questions from the board? And at this time, I'd like to take a vote. Bruce? Um, uh, a motion to approve uh, with the, 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 uh, the caveat that the a more definitive plan, I think, on the, on the soil in the back wants to be looked at as well as the overall landscaping. Mm. Can, I, uh, can I make an amendment? Please. Motion? You know, I move to approve the project um, uh, subject to staff's recommendations per the report for today's meeting. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Aye. Thank you. Our next item is consideration of a request for approval of a demolition and replacement residence located at 660 Northrop Croft Court. Approval of the overall site plan and landscape plan is also requested. No variances are requested. Owners are Patrick and Ann Allen. The representative is Gary Frank, architect. Uh, let me just see if we plug it in. So here. I have a mouse. No, I have a mouse. We just no picture yet. 
you don't have any rope, you gotta move it first row, but I think it's there. Where's your first row? Right there, it's coming up. And you go up the screen here to get up there. Wait, there. There it is. So now come across here. Okay, put your um, player down. So you start your presentation again. Okay. Usually it just came on. Hang on one second, we're just uh, getting this organized. I think that'll play the whole show though. Yeah, she should play it up there, then she would miss here, right? It would split. That's right. Ah, there, uh, there we go. Okay, good. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Hey, Terry, how are you? <laughs> okay, we're ready? Mm -hmm. Good. Hi, good. Gary. If we can please limit your, your um, outline to 10 minutes, yep. please. No problem. Uh, uh, good evening, Chairman uh, Friedman uh, and members of the board. I'm representing Pat and Ann Allen, who are uh, the current owners of the property, and they are here tonight. Uh, we have assembled a great team, Rich Bonderwoods of the Smart Construction Group, Terry Gwynn of Terry Gwynn Landscape Architects, uh, and of course, our model is here also. Terry specializes in designing landscapes using the natural features of the, natural features of the site, factoring in the environmental and ecological conditions of each, creating a highly visual and site-specific design. She's completed projects like Millennium Park, the Lurie Gardens, and the Chicago Riverwalk, to name a few. Uh, Don Fielding uh, is our um, uh, civil engineer. Back in February of uh, 2014, the board reviewed an application for demolition to the existing home to get your general support for the demolition. At that time, the board had agreed that the home was worthy of demolition in concept, um, by a six to one uh, agreement um, and at that time had requested uh, and required the plans of the replacement home be presented bef before a formal decision could be, uh, be made. Tonight I'm here to present the plans of the new home and also will briefly um, go back and review the uh, demolition uh, plans that were presented back then. The uh, project location is uh, 660 Northcroft. Um, it sits on two and a half acres of wooded site uh, with a natural wetlands uh, right in, in this area here. Uh, the dr and, and, backs, and it backs up to an open lands area in the back of the house. The drive entrance uh, is at the end of a cul-de-sac that also serves two other homes. It is very isolated, has no visibility from the street, and is virtually unseen by any other home in the neighborhood. These are some uh, other homes in the neighborhood that sit in fairly large parcels of land and are quite independent from one another. They range from very large to medium-sized brick homes, along with some stucco homes. So these are just a, a few of the neighborhood, neighborhood homes. This is the existing house. The, ho the, house, the existing house was built in 1991 as a spec house. It has been poorly, poorly detailed throughout without much thought, vision, or co cohesiveness. The front porch has no proportion or scale and is not properly detailed. The columns are too small, and our columns, which are right up, right up in here, um, are too small and are buried into the ceiling. The cornice is some sort of built-up cake effect that defies architectural description. There are bays without detailing that appear randomly placed, window divides that are snap-in. The garage was not uh, built as drawn as now has a very awkward proportion right in, right in through here. The back of the house is overpowering with no sense of scale, not to mention that it has an undivided, uh, you can't really see it in this picture, I just brought the overall, but the, the divided lights, if you remember, were, an odd, were odd patterns. 
the uh, site has a 150-year-old uh, uh, cottonwood, which is actually one of the main features on the site bes besides the wetlands area. And uh, this is the approach uh, to the existing, the existing home, which basically from the cul-de-sac, as, as I said, was, is unseen. This is a good example of a home worthy of being demolished, which is where we left off last year. The, uh, the existing house is sited perpendicular to the cul-de-sac right in here, which is the way the houses were set up back uh, when the uh, properties were, were subdivided. The orientation is very awkward to the site, and the views to the site, while it's awkward, the views are very awkward because what happens is instead of looking down the uh, open views in this direction, they're off at an angle. The orientation also is very limiting uh, to sunlight in the home, which as you remember, there was a, we did a sun study, uh, which we will uh, present to you again. Subsequently, we have reoriented the home to be on the north-south axis, so in this direction here, and so it's, it's now it's perpendicular square to the, to the uh, property. Uh, this allows us to take full advantage of the sunlight, uh, connections to the exterior gardens, and uh, the landscaping. So this is the, the reorientation, the reoriented of the house so that as you approach the house, it now has, uh, takes advantage of the full length of the property. This is the west elevation of the existing house um, at around 2.30 in, uh, I believe it's in March, March or April. And you can see that because the house is turned uh, awkwardly in a northwesterly um, uh, angle that the house is, is predominantly, well, it's all in shadow. By turning the house into the north-south axis, uh, this is uh, the rear elevation of the home. You can see now that the house is uh, almost, well, it is all, all in the sun, and what you see right in here in the shadows is a overhang of the porch. And if you take a look at the model, actually, I'd have to flip the model around. Do you want me to flip the model around so you can see the back porch? Sure. This is Jeff from my office, Jeff Eichhorn from my office, and Rich Bondowitz from the uh, from the Smart Group. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, so you can see that there are uh, some back porches um, along the rear elevation um, that create a little bit of shadow uh, on the uh, into the house. The nice thing, though, is that even though there's the porches on there, uh, because of, this, of, of western and southern light, you still get bounced light into the house. So that it actually it protects, it, it actually acts as a protection for direct sunlight, but still allows sunlight into the, into the home. The approach to the house has a wonderful sequence of spaces. This is achieved by dividing the spaces with, uh, with the use of wood, and stone fencing along with the beautiful perennial gardens. These elements give the approach a warm and inviting feeling. Uh, if you take a look on, the, uh, in, on your monitor on your screen, all the, the purple areas are all perennial gardens. So as, you, as we approach uh, from a car uh, into, onto the site, uh, we have created these beautiful perennial gardens with sort of separations of wood fencing right in here and here. Uh, and, and here, so we've created a, a courtyard. We have a, um, we've also created an area for a vegetable garden, uh, and we've created a entertainment area uh, back in the uh, western part of the home with a pool, a bocce court, uh, and a open uh, porch. I should also note that uh, in previous plans, uh, we had uh, a four. Car, we had a two car. We have we have a four car garage, but we separated them into two two car garages. And Jeff, where's Jeff? Oh, can you just swing the model model around? Um, the original one of the original pro, uh, um, designs that we had presented with staff had the garages covered, and uh, uh, the staff was concerned. Actually, turn it uh, towards yeah that way more, yeah, so they can see the garages there. 
Exactly. So we actually took the uh, covering off of the, 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 the uh, uh, roof off of the garage and separated them and created a very uh, pretty elevation um, for that. These are a couple of, um, uh, couple of uh, building of, of gates that we have. So a typical gate might be like this. Uh, we have selected uh, exterior uh, granite stone and these are some images of uh, the vegetable garden. Uh, landscaping, uh, blue, we're predominantly bluestone walkways. Uh, this is a, a the bocce court, some sun planting, and some shade planting. Uh, I've just presented, the, I've just given you the plan just as a point of reference, so if you have any questions about how it relates to the, the model and the, um, the elevations once we get there, uh, just so there's a clear understanding. So the uh, front door is right here. Um, this only shows one garage because actually the other garage is off the page, but the front door is right here. There's an entryway, a stair area, uh, off to the left is a living room, an office, and a garden room. And to the right is a dining room, a kitchen breakfast family room, mud room garage over here, and this is that open, po uh, open porch which uh, <coughs> looks out to the pool. There is a covered porch along the back which, we've, which, you've, just, um, which you've just seen. Uh, the second floor is made up of bedrooms, bedroom, 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 master. Uh, the important part here is, is where the stairwell is and we have the cupola that you see um, on the drawing. We have taken into account many factors which have influenced the design of the home. I hear, my, I hear a beeper going off so I'll go faster. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a lot to, Gary, what's that? We have a large agenda. Yes, I know you do. So um, it was, okay, so uh, I'll, just, I'll just go through uh, just quickly. So we've taken into account your, all your comments about size, mass, scale, proportion, um, roofs that come down to the, to the first floor. There's very few, um, there's very few areas of two-story spaces. This is the courtyard, uh, has much, uh, much lower eaves. Uh, the roofs um, uh, go up to about 28 feet. Uh, this is the courtyard. Uh, this is the back of the house, again, with the porches that you've, that you've seen. Uh, the pool area looking back towards the house. Uh, the next slide is actually uh, an important one for you. Uh, this is a comparison of the, of the two homes. Uh, as you can see, that our home is considerably lower than the existing. It is much less massive. Uh, the, the existing home has thir is 38 feet 6 inches. Our new roof line is 28 feet. And the existing eave line for the, um, for the existing house is 2110. Our eave line uh, is about 12 foot uh, 3. Sort of in summation <laughs> for you, uh, is that this is the existing house, and this is the this is the proposed the proposed house. So, we've done we have we've also given staff we have about ten other pages of lighting plans, uh, treescapes, landscaping, um, civil engineering, variety of other drawings that we've tried to condense. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Kathy. Thank you, Acting Chairman Friedman. Um, you do, ju just so you know, the, the board did get a very thick packet of all the information yes. you, you did submit, so they are aware of that. Uh, this is a project that you saw last February just as an initial presentation, although it is quite unusual to see a request for approval of demolition of a house built in the late 1980s of uh, about 9,400 square feet. This is a house that was built shortly after this uh, subdivision was approved. Um, it is a really spectacular lot. It is adjacent to open land. Uh, it is not highly visible from a primary street. It's located at the end of the cul-de-sac. And the materials presented really are, uh, present a, a strong, well thought out design. The shingle style is appropriate for this natural site as it uh, moves into the open lands. Um, from the staff perspective, uh, you do have findings in your staff, in your report that support the demolition. Uh, with respect to the replacement house, we believe it's a strong design. We think there, uh, there is further detailing that is needed. Uh, the, the graphic images that are presented are, are very strong. Um, 
with your your nod, although we don't think action is appropriate tonight, uh, we think uh, strong direction to the petitioner in support of the project with the encouragement to proceed with design development so that uh, more detailed elevations can be brought back so that you just have the assurance that uh, the images that are being presented uh, really be, will, will be implemented um, as elegantly as they are shown here. Um, there are a number of trees proposed for removal, although we did get a tree removal plan. Some of that information is difficult to read. Uh, we would like to work with the petitioner to understand exactly which trees are being removed so we can do an appropriate calculation of inch for inch replacement. Uh, there are some trees that we would not require replacement for. Uh, if there is not an opportunity to do plantings on the site, there would be an opportunity to make a payment in lieu of and we do some uh, streetscape plantings to enhance the overall neighborhood. Uh, the lighting plan is also something uh, that needs some further attention. Um, there's a, a large number of lights proposed on the plan. Um, I think the, the number is, is like over 80 <coughs> lights. This is um, unusual. We, we do... Uh, um, we, we'll, move, pair that, we'll pair that down. We do move <laughs> toward a, a right to night or, or dark sky theme in the city of Lake Forest. Um, and particularly since this property is adjacent to open lands, I think there needs to be some, some sensitivity about the types of lighting. I think the board will also be interested in, in seeing the fixtures. Um, landscape plan, again, is, is detailed. We need to better understand exactly what the plantings are, the hardscape, um, and then some refinement on the various fences. Uh, some of the fences and pillars shown do ex exceed the seven-foot height limit, so we'd like the opportunity to work the, with the petitioner on that as well. Um, we do recommend that you indicate support and continue this item. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. At this time, I'd like to take comments from the public. Okay, none there, so we'll swing to the board. Questions, Fred? Uh, yeah, the question about the, the court uh, yard, if that's what it would be, the forecourt leading from the, uh, uh, the vehicle uh, loop uh, to the front door. The site plan, con the concept grading plan shows a series of sort of random uh, walkways, uh, mostly uh, running north-south and parallel to each other, which uh, you know, kind of you know, begged the question of why. I mean, if, if, if I really don't understand what kind of circulation they're intended to have, and assuming that they have a function, um, they, which I don't find, uh, unless it's to go out and attend to the plants, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's yeah, very formal and in in a, in a, in a not Yes. Yeah, so, geometry of the house. Yes. Yeah, so the uh, so the perennial gardens that um, are are planned in order to get to the plants to take care of them, it's nice to be able to get around them uh, in some form or fashion. So the the pathways that you see or the stepping stones that you see are really secondary type of pathways. Uh, they they might be a blue stone with a grass with a grass space and a blue stone with a grass space. So they'll be uh, a little bit more informal. Uh, the for, uh, the formal area uh, is really that set that center. Um, I can't get the can't get the slides back together, but uh, was really the um, uh, there's a, there's a formal axis so that when you come in from the driveway, it directs you directly to the um, uh, into the house. I just my my comment is that I think it's not as 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 much developed as it could be, and 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 that. Uh, I don't think it's up to the quality of other things that are that are in the uh, the proposal, uh, the, the repetition of planes, the repetition of elements. Uh, uh, there's a lot of nice things going on in the massing and the and the, uh, the design of the house itself. And uh, this forecourt, it just seems to me, is not uh, decided what it wants to be. Yet. Well, and, we'll uh, we'll work on that for the next uh, for the next meeting. Up. I have a question. Yes. The, the cupolas that you have on there? Yes. Are those lighted? In t is the cupola lighted independently, or is it just like um, radiated light? Yes. So, uh, so the intention there is not to have any light uh, in the cupola, uh, but it would be really more ambient light that is uh, thrown down on the surfaces below. Um, so it's it's really it's it is ambient light. Uh, and then second is it's not intended to be on all night. It you know it would be on till you know 10:30 or 11, uh, maybe even not on at all. 
Uh, so it just depends on you know the time of day and if there's maybe uh, any entertaining going on or that it, and I had given you the uh, the floor plan so you could understand a little bit better um, where that uh, fits on into the into the house uh, there are two stairways in the house uh, so probably because the master suite is actually towards the uh, the secondary stair which is actually off to, to my side um, that probably is going to be used more often than the, uh, the the main stairway and my only other one is um, one of the things we're required to do is deal with the, you know basically a type color texture of all the yes the design details yes and that's one thing that I'm lacking so um, Kathy well, is well, there well, well, you don't have to do anything right now, okay okay what, what I'm saying is that some of the staff recommendations which I agree with yes are for you to come back yeah, no with those design details and kind of clean up the lighting issues, no the fence problem. issue, and so that's not a, so that's yeah, so good. No, you. no problem. Thanks. We've done these houses a number of times to try and get it all into 10 minutes is difficult. <laughs> Mike? I don't have any questions at this time. <clears throat> Bruce? Just a clarification question. Uh, I saw somewhere uh, in here a, a reference to pavers around the pool, but it is blue stone. Yes. Okay. Yes. Great. That was it. That was the only yes. clarification question. The pavers where? Around the pool. In the pool. And the driveway? Any thought with the material? Uh, yeah, well, yes. The, the answer is yes. We haven't uh, finalized it yet, but the thinking was is that we'd have some sort of uh, gra uh, granite uh, edges mm -hmm. uh, to it and then have a, um, basically it's a, a impregnated uh, into, a, into a black, sur into the black top, a, a, a bluestone gravel, uh, so it's semi, um, it's semi stuck right. to, the, um, uh, to, the, to the tar. Thank you. Well, at this time, I believe we have two distinct motions. Demolition uh, being first. Normally, the board would not take formal action. I think it's appropriate to give the petitioner a clear indication if you have any concerns about the demolition. Um, but, but if you want more detail and more clarification, I would suggest you continue the petition with direction that um, that you like the style, the detail, the um, the elements and that you really look you're encouraging them to proceed with design development and come back one more time with details uh, That work they would need to do anyway to move toward permitting yeah. so mm -hmm. continuing the petition would be appropriate if you want more information demolition approval I Including the demolition um, But I think you want to indicate to the petitioners whether or not you're supportive of the demolition Generally Fred do you have any well, I, I, uh, I'm very much in favor of the demolition. I think that that case was made very well last February, a year ago. It's been made again tonight very well. So I have no problem with that side of it. And uh, I would encourage the continuance with the design development with the comments I already made. I agree. I agree. Yep, I agree. I just had um, some very quick comments and just really just yes. take these as food for thought. Yes. I'm not a trained architect by any means, but, but they also relate to some questions. Um, as I look at the, uh, the two garage structures, yes. um, visually it looks as though the intent was almost to make it like an LA in that because they are truly perfectly matched, so it almost looks as though you're, you've created it as almost a, a gated area that you drive That's through. That's correct. Um, and I would only ask you to, with the owners, revisit whether or not that's what you want to do because what you do is you visually basically pull your eye completely away from the home because you've now taken two totally matching structures and, and put them side by side. To me, as I think of this architectural style, it's okay to have the, uh, the detached garage with, the, uh, with the, the roof feature, let it be its own character, almost like a standalone cottage, and then you can let the, the attached garage you can knock that, that uh, roof piece off and just let it blend more into the home. I just throw that out as food okay. for thought as you, as you move forward, but I think that's a, a personal taste issue. Um, and then another one was a question uh, on, it depends on what elevation you want to look at, but we'll, I'll just pull one out. For the, um, the um, Rich, there is a, uh, let's see here. There is a side of the home that on the top of the uh, windows. Can you tell me which page? Oh, here, sure, I'll do, let me do that for you. Do you have a page number on there? I can, uh, I don't know if these have, but I can just give you an elevation okay, page ahead. and you can do it. Tell me, tell me what uh, elevation. Sure thing. 
uh, for the, I mean, you can just look at, I don't see a page on it. Um, it's not that critical, you'll, you'll get it immediately. There is a side of the home where all of the windows have hatching on the very top. In other words, you have a, a full-size window yes, on the very yes, top. Yes, 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 yes. You have a decorative hatching. Yes. And you've, and you've matched it on both sides. Yes. So on, on uh, front and back. Yes. And I guess th the idea is to separate from, that, the, 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 from the whole home. Given that you actually have windows that are identical elsewhere in the house, though, that don't have the hatching, I just didn't know if you wanted to think about whether or not you actually wanted that to be a design feature and, and have it seem like it's completely part of the home as opposed to just for that one section of the... Okay, we'll take, we'll take a look at And again, at th these are just thoughts for you, That's things fine. that kind of stuck out to me. Um, and you answered my pool question, so... Uh, and I'm certainly supportive of the demolition. So a few comments. I support the demolition as well. I think there's clear precedent for that. And uh, I believe that the home is moving in a, in a lovely direction, organic to the site, and uh, very pleasing and, and uh, quality oriented with natural materials. The staff's recommendation uh, sounds like we're all supportive of that to further, further delineate the plans, the details in all regards. Great especially inclusive of landscaping. We it's can do that. It's important, quantity, features, color, size. Uh, with that said, do we have a motion? Yeah, I'll move for conditional approval uh, of the project. Second. Continue. Yeah, exactly. Condition, it's conditional approval of the project based upon the staff recommendations and findings recommendations for today, but to continue it subject to the requirements in the staff report and as we discussed on the board level here. Understood. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you very much. Uh, just one, just one real quick thing for you. Um, I was, I was uh, uh, the former chairman of the Design Review Board for the Village of Winnetka, so I want to uh, commend you for your commitment here uh, in Lake Forest. Okay. Thank you. Our next petition is consideration of a request for approval of a new student union building located on the Lake Forest Academy campus at 1500 Kennedy Road. Approval of demolition of a small portion of a residence hall is requested to accommodate the student union. Approval of associated landscaping is also requested. The owner is Lake Forest Academy. Representative is Peter Whitmer, architect. Thank you. It's all yours, Pete. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to start with the uh, overall. Uh, this is the main campus. I, I don't have a, a picture showing out at Route 60, but uh, north is actually um, in this direction. It's not up. Um, the existing or the original manor house, uh, the Arthur Hewn estate was here. The, the Armour estate was here originally. Um, there's been obviously numerous, uh, a lot of renovations and a lot of additions over the years. Um, we've been fortunate to be involved in a lot of them, so we've studied this campus probably for about 18 years. Uh, and I think uh, when we came uh, to this project, we've been looking at this for probably a couple of years actually. Uh, we looked at a lot of different options, and, and one was uh, the original, or where they have their dining facility and student commons is in a building right here. Uh, we looked at a lot of different alternatives to renovate that building, tear it down, um, add on to it. And really what came out of it was two things. One is, is that the school could use the existing space for other, uh, for music and, and performing arts things that they, they could expand into. And also that the, um, the future, uh, that we had this space in front of it, which made uh, a lot more sense in terms of capturing the uh, views and really enhancing this, what I call the green, which is a central um, green space uh, in the campus. We, the, the original Armour Estate was really fairly an age plan and really set up 
against the, the garden to the back. And, and this is sort of the same thing where this green space is, a, is an organizational thing. Mm -hmm. Other main pieces to the campus is, is that we have this, the main axis, the pedestrian access kids go from, uh, this is the educational piece, the housing piece, and then the, uh, the athletics piece. So uh, there's a, a, a main pedestrian access that, that goes down the center of the campus that we wanted to maintain. Uh, our building is, is really, the student union is the center of campus, and it's almost literally in the center of campus. And it makes a lot of sense, being both a, a boarding school and a day school, uh, that all the dormitories in terms of close relationship to that on the edge of the academic space, and then also is a centerpiece um, to the green. And so uh, its location became pretty apparent. A few other subtleties to the, the piece is that as you drive down through campus, um, we have the original Corbin Hall, which was a modern addition in the beginning, and then we, we built a performing arts center, and there's these little slits in between the buildings, which you get glimpses through, which is pretty unique. Here, on the first one, you see the tower of, of, of uh, the original manor house. Um, the second one, you see uh, actually a little piece of the, um, the old laundry. And then on this one, we've lined up our door so that you can come through, and actually the front door of our building lines up. So the main parking areas for most of the um, visitors coming can come through and they actually do see the front door. So there is some more organizational ideas uh, moving north-south. And then the obvious one is, is that on the east-west axis that it lines up in the center of the, the green and, and looks onto that. Um, what we have to take out to get this in, uh, a bunch of uh, ash trees which are really diseased uh, fortunately or unfortunately for this. Uh, and then there's a little piece of a, a dormitory uh, that was built in the 60s, which really uh, you'll see in the um, renderings, and I've got a few more details on that we can show you uh, just a little bit later. So this is our uh, building footprint, and you can see uh, what we've done with the, it, it, it is a perfect square, and there's something nice about uh, the geometry of a perfect square. One is you get the most interior area, for the minimum amount of exterior space. I think that's an interesting idea. Um, the other is, is that then we have basically all this glass that looks out onto the, the big green to the north. Unfortunately, it's facing north, so it doesn't get glare into the, the building too. Uh, so there are some really nice things that happen. Uh, the service end is, is kind of tucked between what I would say is the service side of the existing building that we're remaining. The loading dock is in this area. We do have to maintain an access underneath uh, to an area here. Um, and then there's some service parking in the back edge. Main entrances of the building is really off this uh, pedestrian access on the east, secondary entrance on the west, and then more of a monumental uh, idea is off this raised um, courtyard, which wraps around. You can see here's the first floor plan, a little bit bigger piece of this, um, this, this monumental stair that looks out into this field. So there's this, this is about eight feet up from the grade. Mm -hmm. um, so this terrace is the raised area that looks out over um, the, the field. The entrance is, is at grade and then it's, it's uh, sort of a mid-level, so you go up to this dining facility, dining room here, some lounge areas, media lounge, and then the more service-oriented stuff is uh, in the uh, southwest corner, bathrooms, kitchens, those sorts of things. Downstairs we have uh, what we call an active common space, which has uh, pool tables and, and ping pong tables and video games and those things. Uh, and a school store um, and mail and some club rooms some uh, uh, that are in the lower level along with some storage areas there. Uh, this is a contextual sort of diagrammatic drawing and basically what we did with the height of the building is really match up the eave lines with the, the new science building um, to, the, to, to the east uh, in the Performing Arts Center. And then the, the main building still is, has a higher eave line, so the original uh, manor house still has this higher presence. And, and you know, one of the things is you, you could kind of approach this design in two different ways. One is you can make a historic looking manor house, and, and really we didn't feel that that was appropriate. One is, is that we just use the materials and has a contextual idea about it. So one of the big things that all the buildings out there that we felt was really important is to maintain the Luigi clay tile roofs so that all the buildings have uh, a similar roof uh, material and has a pitch to it. So uh, we're able to do that with the roof 
uh, and, and that has it, it, its piece. The other thing is understanding about the surface of the materials too and having some relationship to the original building in a modern sense. Um, I'm gonna keep moving here. The building is relatively simple in terms of the elevations, a glass curtain wall that looks to the north, um, the east elevation, and because it's east and west, we're concerned about sunlight coming in, uh, so it has alternating um, glass and, and precast uh, concrete panels. We have eroded the corners so that when you're in the spaces, you'll, you'll see how, when you, you'll see through the diagonals. We feel that that's an important uh, visual from the inside of the building. Then the south elevation, this is more of a service side elevation, so our kitchens and all that are in the back. We do have some natural light coming into the kitchen uh, with a couple little punched openings. And then the west elevation, um, again, carries that same theme around where the dining room is. And there's a few, there's an entrance piece here, and then this is the kitchen elevation will be solid in that location. Section, one of the things in the section I note, you can just see how this raised floor is up about eight feet from the grade. And then all of our mechanical uh, equipment for the building is tucked in a sort of big bathtub in the center so you can't see it, uh, which really works uh, quite well. This is a little bit of detail of the uh, portion that we're taking off Marshall Field House, the dormitory. There's a, a residence, uh, faculty housing apartment at the end, plus two dormitory rooms. And we're basically uh, removing those and then just replacing them with a brick wall. This is the elevation of that. So this is the piece that sticks up um, that we're removing. And then uh, we're, this is what we're coming back, which is really a, an emergency egress um, exit there. We have a, a row of uh, Arbor Vitae uh, landscape to really sort of hide that building from, from our new structure. The, I think this is a, a, a good uh, rendition of what's here and what we're proposing. Um, it's really hard to see on this, but this is the piece of Marshall Field that we're actually tearing off. And you can see it cuts into this sort of square rectilinear quad. Um, so you come through this. This is our raised terrace, this, these banks. Uh, and then here's our building that sits at the end of it. So it has a very good uh, transparency to it too. Uh, not only dramatic from the outside and during the day, but also at night being sort of this beacon at night. Um, you got to remember, this is a 365 a day occupied space. I, I, I don't know, it's 150 uh, faculty that live there, um, something like that. And so, you know, they're going there Saturday, Sunday through the summer. Uh, they eat not only dinner, lunch, and breakfast all in this space. So it's not just a, 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 a what you might typically think is a, is a public high school. Uh, this is the corner of the southeast, um, or I'm sorry, southwest corner. Um, the one of the things that we're doing this bank is we're we we'll really have it just as, as grass. And what we'd like to do is, is so kids can then just sort of use it as a bleacher so that you can sit and watch the field. You can sit on the grass, you can still mow it. Uh, we are concerned about maintenance in terms of, it is a, uh, uh, you know, they don't have an unlimited budget in terms of, of maintenance. So we want to try to make it easy. We do have a, a row of um, elms that are up here to give it some softness in, in, in terms of uh, the landscape. Here's a little bit better picture of this. You can see this. Uh, berming up in this major stair. And again, this stair is sort of like the Spanish stair. So kids can hang out on it and sit on it. It's, it's not really a, a grandiose. So let's go through here quick. I do have some interior shots. This is the um, uh, from the science building looking out of the second floor in here. We did put some landscaping in here uh, to shield in between these two buildings so that we aren't looking at the loading area. Uh, this is looking back. This is the athletic building. This is the main public quarter. So this is the east elevation. Here's the corners that we're talking about that are eroding out. I just show you some interior shots just to see what it is like on the outside. Um, it's just the entrance piece. And then this is looking back out at the field. So when you're in the dining facility. And then again, this is looking at the corner, looking out. Um, here's how the corner where you really start to catch capture other pieces so that we really like the glass to come out inside and outside. Just the dining areas, let's see. Downstairs, again, by raising the up, we get light into this lower area, uh, which is another nice feature of the design. A couple of details, uh, at the entrance, um, we're planning on using this um, type of just covering just to have a little glass piece so that when you open the door, we get some protection from the rain. Uh, this over here is the, uh, the sample of the dark bronze uh, window front system that we're using, a little piece of the precast that we're doing. Uh, this is a precast. We've worked with this precaster before. Um, 
and, and basically what we're trying to do is when you are far away from that, it looks like the plaster of the original building. Uh, and then this piece is a trim piece, which is a polished um, precast, which looks like stone. The original building has stucco and marble. Uh, and so we're trying to simulate that in the precast piece. Uh, and then here's just a, a curtain wall for the, um, uh, the glass. And then the Luigi clay tile is just a, one of the existing buildings is showing the clay tile on the top there. Um, this is a section, um, some of the details of, of how the, this is all metal, dark bronze at the edge. Uh, and then this is the well that we're building. And the last piece is just a landscape plan, which uh, is relatively pretty simple. Um, we are provided along this edge, so when you look out through, you won't see the roof of, of this building. <laughs> These um, pioneer elm trees along the uh, north edge, and then some landscape around um, here, a couple of lower uh, deciduous trees, so we don't see into this um, loading area. There is a little strip around the edge, um, uh, gravel strip around the edge of the building, uh, just to keep it clean, so that because we always have this maintenance problems of mowing up next to the building. So uh, that's it for my presentation, and open it up for questions. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Kathy. Thank you, Staff. Acting Chairman Friedman. Um, the Building Review Board over the past uh, five, 10 years has seen a number of projects as Lake Forest Academy continues to uh, in enhance its facility. Um, the board initially saw the Performing Arts Center, which is located uh, just to the east of this proposed building, uh, a new um, boys' dormitory, which is also to the east, uh, addition to the, the student uh, Health and Fitness Center, which is directly to the north, and then most recently the new girls' dormitory that's located generally to the, the northwest of this. So um, this is a, a continuation of the development on the campus that has occurred. Uh, the interesting thing about uh, this building is that not only is it completely internal to the campus, uh, but the until you get out to Route 60, uh, the road all the way back, Academy Drive, is not a public road. So there is no visibility of the campus at all um, from a public right-of-way. Uh, the proposed materials, the overall concept for the building is consistent with other development that has recently occurred. Um, this building is, is located, uh, as Mr. Whitner, Whitmer explained it, really to be prominent, to, to be a, a beacon, to be a, a center of activity, something that the students and the faculty don't currently have on the campus. Uh, it is elevated so that not only the, the building serves as the facility, but as you heard, the stairs and the, the, the grass area really provide an opportunity for gathering and uh, watching activities on the field. Um, this building also screens a, a part of the campus that, that is really a service area, it appears to be a, a bit of a, a back of the house. So this really creates a, a very nice terminus to um, that commons or, or that green area. You do have findings in your staff report uh, in support of this project, and if you choose to do so, it would be appropriate to uh, move this petition forward with a recommendation and support to the City Council. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. At this time, I'd like to invite public comment. Seeing none, let's move to board questions. Fred? Uh, I don't have questions or comments. Comments? No, that's right. I think this is really terrific. Uh, oh, the uh, roof uh, element is very consistent. It extends its, its continuity with the rest of the campus, which is really uh, very strong. And um, it, it's an enhancement. The building is really an enhancement <coughs> to the campus, not only functionally, but aesthetically, um, like what you've done with the berm on the terminus to the uh, the, the open area, et cetera, et cetera. I think. Uh, uh, the detailing and the massing and the design are really uh, excellent. Bob? I, I'll give, uh, the only question I have is, you did the work on the other buildings, so you're matching all the colors. Correct. Great. I think it's a nice, it would be a nice addition to the academy. Bruce? Yeah, uh, yeah I'll, in the interest of time, I'll mix uh, questions and comments. The glass, is it is it tinted to any degree? Uh, yeah. No, it's really not. Good. It'll be relatively transparent. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then I would imagine you put some thought to drainage. I think it's a fantastic idea to basically have the, the space for people to, to sit up and on, almost be elevated to watch sports or whatever. But at the same time, with the snow and the water and everything else running right towards the field, that could end we, up being we an really issue. So I would imagine you got that yeah. figured out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
And I'm totally supportive. I think it's great, and I think it was a great decision to actually try and make it more subdued to blend in um, too much or put too much emphasis on making that happen. You went the other direction and said, why don't we actually make it more prominent as it should be? And I think it enhances actually the, the form of it is great, and I think the functionality, of course, will be greatly appreciated by everybody there. So I, I, I think it's fantastic. Thanks, Bruce. Peter, what is the square footage of the building? Uh, it, the footprint is about uh, 11,000 square feet. So it's about 20, 22,000 with the lower level. Thank you. Well, I, I agree with my fellow board members. I commend uh, the sensitivity to the site and the campus and, and uh, its functionality as well as its aesthetic tie to, to uh, what's been there. I can support this petition as well. At this time, uh, do we have a motion? Uh, can I, Kathy, do we have to do a motion for the demolition and then a motion for the construction? You could make it one motion, uh, support partial demolition of Marshall Field House uh, mm -hmm. and, rec and recommend approval of the building and landscaping. You could do and, it as one. All right, I move to support the partial demolition of the house as well as the approval of the construction of the new project, subject to the um, findings and conditions in the staff report for today's meeting. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'd like to take a short five minute break before we hear the final petition. So, 10 2. Thank you.
break. We now roll into the consideration of request for approval of architectural design, massing, detailing, and exterior materials for a new residential development proposed on a 10-acre parcel located at the northwest corner of Laurel and Western Avenues. Consideration of landscape and lighting plans is also requested. Board input and direction is requested. This matter will return to the board for action at a future meeting. And we've got a, a, a large presentation and a full gallery, a lot of discussion. So, so I'd like to ask that we limit the architectural presentation to 20 minutes, please. And then every, everybody in the public who wishes to comment will have five minutes, but no more, please. So with that said. Wonderful, thank you. Good evening, my name is Christine Cobb. I'm with Focus Development. Wait, and before we continue. Well, we will. I have a conflict. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do any of the board members have a conflict? Uh, yes, Acting Chairman Friedman. I, our, my company is involved with this project, so I'd like to recuse myself from this discussion. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> we'll start the clock Second over. Second time. Good evening again. Um, I'm Christine, I'm with Focus Development. Uh, on behalf of Focus and our design team, I wanna extend our thanks to the board and city staff and members of the community who are able to attend tonight as we introduce our vision for the Laurel and Western Avenue redevelopment. Tim Anderson is the CEO and president of Focus. He's unable to be here this evening and he asks that I extend his thanks as well. Tim founded Focus in 1993. It's a combined general contracting and development company and the thought was that if you combine those functions, you'll, you'll end up with a, a stronger product from both the quality standpoint as well as execution. And we have successful developments from around the North Shore that have proved that out. And we're very excited to be back here in Lake Forest with another redevelopment. Our design team uh, that we selected for this project uh, is top-notch designers. They all have experience working in the community uh, in Lake Forest and experience working with each other on past projects. They share our commitment to quality design and we're delighted that some of them are here this evening to present uh, the vision that we've created. And before we jump into that vision, I wanted to take a step to educate the board about the process we've gone through to date and some parameters that we've um, held at heart as we've designed the 10 acres. Kathy provided some information in the packets on the process that this site has undergone for the past several years. There was a community engagement process from 2007 to 2008 that informed design parameters that were issued in an RFP in 2013 that our team responded to and ultimately was selected for for our respect for the design guidelines and the vision that we'll present this evening. And we presented part of a, a vision, the vision where it was in December, uh, to the plan commission December 10th, and uh, got a lot of really great feedback. The plan accomplished many of the design goals from the RFP, provided underground parking and a level <coughs> of density that enabled significant green space on the site. It provided connectivity to surrounding communities and vehicular and pedestrian access throughout the site. And it also met goals from the city's strategic plans around introducing new residential types into East Lake Forest. The plan raised a number of concerns from residents that we listened to December 10th, including uh, the character of Franklin Place, where new on-street parking had been introduced. The Franklin Park, which was conceived as more of a hardscape pocket park in this in this site plan uh, as well as garage access points off of Franklin and Laurel where we would be feeding cars onto the public traffic system and after we left the meeting we of course revisited the design with these concerns in mind the site plan that we're working from today and that we'll present this evening corrects many of these larger issues 
We've removed the public parking on Franklin Place and we're preserving the beautiful mature trees that are there. We're greening up uh, Franklin Park and extending it through the entire run south down Western so that there's ample replacement green, place, green space for Franklin Park. We've also relocated the underground garage entry points from Franklin and Laurel to Western, the busier street um, of the three, and the new interior road where you'll have a hidden entry for the condos. This is a work in progress. We're here to listen tonight. We're happy to be here, and we look forward to your input. And with that said, I'd like to invite Carrie Willabin Mead from Mariani Landscape to present their vision and our vision for the setting of the development. Some, I see some familiar faces, so some of you have heard some of this before, but our design team started off with a vision of really wanting to preserve as much green space as possible, which is why the parking is underground. That allows us to have a site that's over 60% green space, uh, which is fabulous for a development of this size. And our design inspiration really came from pictures of Lake Forest. So this is Market Square with that central park, and we're emulating that right here in our plans. There's familiar details like the light posts that you see here. Those will be along the street. Uh, the, this thoroughfare here is really a cobble street, which is the minimum width that we're allowed to have. So it's a narrow street that has an alley of trees on both sides and will have a concrete curb, but the street itself will be cobbles, which will slow down traffic. Carrie, could I ask you to speak into the microphone? Oh, a little more? sorry. <laughs> I should face everyone. <laughs> uh, and the theme of the planting style was really building on the architectural style, which is a arts and crafts and English-based style. So there'll be a mix of plant material. There's not going to be any monocultures or you know one type of plant. It will really be very textural in a variety of plant materials with a touch of formality through some hedge work, which will be found in some of the specialty areas. Uh, the plan also calls for numerous large caliber shade trees trying to bring the scale of the project down. Uh, and the plants obviously will be selected for durability and longevity. Uh, so we have to keep maintenance in mind with a project like this so it looks good for the long run. So the experience along Franklin Park has been expanded really to encompass this whole area. So there's a winding path through here which connects residents to downtown Lake Forest. And instead of a pocket park, you really have a park that's 150 feet wide and separated from Western through some slight berming and, and soil movement. Uh, we also retained everyone's oak tree. That's right here. That's that big circle. So that's not going anywhere. And we, I've already spoken about the street. That's right through here, the interior street. Um, as Christine mentioned, we've been able to preserve the trees along Franklin and along Laurel. How do I move this forward? Oh, there we go. So the interior green spaces have a lot of amenities, and this is really important because we want people to be outside. We want the space to be vibrant. Uh, we want people enjoying the spaces. So some of the things you'll see on the plan is the lap pool, which is right here. It's really going to be a dark bottom lap pool with two lanes. It's not a public pool. It's for the residents only. There's gravel bocce courts here. Uh, so it will be similar in feel to this area, that picture you're seeing here. And then there's a fire pit, which anchors the Great Lawn down here. So it will be something that residents can gather around and enjoy. And then several barbecue areas will be located throughout the plan. There's a pair here, and there will be some over here, uh, with areas to enjoy you know, a dinner outside. So I'm going to walk through some sketches we did to help explain your experience as you walk through the space. So this is your view from Laurel and Western, looking, inviting you into the newly expanded Franklin Park. So you can see the path kind of winds in. And it's not an experience where you're walking along the road. It really meanders through that space. And as you go up that road, you see a more formal entrance which is centered on 
the architecture through the Great Lawn, so it invites you in to use that Great Lawn space. We really want public to be able to walk through this and have that connectivity to downtown Lake Forest. So we really want to invite passerbys in to enjoy the space. And then off Laurel, this is a view of that interior road, all cobblestones with an alley of trees. We're very sensitive to having a monocultural, as I mentioned, we're, we're experiencing the problems with that now. So these will be blocks of different types of trees to create the look of an LA without the problems we've discovered about LAs. And then last, there's single family houses off that street. So these are the housing clusters, which, you know, they, the faces of the buildings are staggered, so it's not a linear, it, it, there's movement there. And the residents of the single family houses will be able to customize their landscape, so there'll be a little more variety there in texture. So I'm going to turn this over to our architect, Larry Booth. So keep going. There you go. I think it's uh, very appropriate that the landscape be presented first. Because the landscape is what, the, who's, that's the star of the show. That's what this is about. This is about creating a garden that people live in, in buildings that frame the garden spaces, that are enriched by little activity zones, as have been explained. And uh, with all the automobiles underground and the, every apartment having a view into garden spaces, uh, and this is, the, this is the idea of the buildings. You can see the buildings are in the background. They're not trying to t steal the show from the landscape. So it's, it's like many botanical gardens, like the Chicago Botanical Garden, for example. There are a lot of buildings in that garden, but they don't get in the way of the garden. And we want people to be able to live in the garden. I think that's what Lake Forest is all about. People living out here in great, wonderful natural surroundings and using natural materials in a simple, restrained way that simply articulate and frame the spaces. The architectural heritage, if you will, is English and American arts and crafts. Uh, this is a building you can see. It's just brick. It's got some nice proportions. It's got good detailing. And uh, it, it does what I, I think buildings ought to do, in this case, frame the garden. The uh, buildings are organized. Uh, there, there are four major buildings that are organized around a central lawn. The blue ones are the, ones, uh, the one on the top and the one to the right, which is on Western and Franklin, are rental apartments. And the ones on the lower left corner are condominiums. And then across the road, or the, I wouldn't call it a road, the lane, uh, are 12 single family homes. Now, we went through a number of studies of the buildings and tried different uh, approaches. And the one that, uh, seemed to be the best was this arts and crafts simple buildings. Let's see, wait a minute now. Oh, wait a minute. So there are four buildings. The first one on Western is set back about a hundred. At, at one point, it's set at the south point, the south point at Laurel. It's set back over 140 feet. So it creates a large court, uh, large green space. And if you look at the, the plan of the building, the diagram of the buildings, there are entries on both sides. And the, uh, the building itself, the lower section is the long uh, elevation. You can see it's broken up. It looks like, gee, there are one, two, three, four, five buildings. So it's like an accumulation of small scaled uh, English uh, buildings, like a little English town. And the elevation at the top is the elevation at the short end to give you an idea. 
of the variety of kind of architectural expressions. So then we have a three-story apartment building and the similar strategy has been applied. So there's, it doesn't look repetitive and it doesn't look like a, we're trying to make it look like it was built over time, which it will be built over time, but it, it was organized in a more intimate way than many, many modern buildings that uh, would take the building and make it into a monolith. Then we have a three-story condominium building, which is on Laurel, which has the same strategy. In this case, it's only three little buildings that are grouped together, if you will. <coughs> and then there's a two-story condominium building in the center that comes off that lane. And so you see we have a four-story, two three-stories, and a two-story building. Now, we can make them all three stories. Maybe that's the way we ought to go. I think all three stories makes it look like a project, makes it look like some larger entity had designed it. We want to make it more, more democratic looking, more uh, intimate looking, and broken up into smaller buildings with various heights. So we want a two story, we want a three story, and we want a four story. We want some variety in there. In fact, we finish it off with a little clubhouse that's only one story. So now we have kind of a one story, two story, three story, four story. And we got some variety going up and down. The four story building is set back as far as possible, as you can see, from Western, facing Western for the long way, in the public way, which is a railroad track. So I think we're probably OK there. Seems to me we didn't hurt anybody. And the three-story apartment up in Franklin is opposite a three-story building across the street. So there's a connection to the, to the neighbors there. The single-family homes are on the west side. Now why are they on the west side? Because on the other side of our lot line, there are single-family homes on the west side. So we have single-family homes on the west side. We have rental apartments three-story rental apartments, and then we have the four-story, gives us the variety, and it gives the, the lawn and the open space, the plaza, the, a, a certain anchor, and I think it, uh, it all seems to make sense to me. Then in the single-family homes, again, we looked at English arts and crafts, and Studied that, looked at different ways of doing it, came up with an idea of three uh, houses in a row. So we don't have more than three houses on either side of the little uh, cul-de-sac that goes in to the west of the, of the north-south lane. And so you can see the elevations of those are broken up into one-story and two-story sections. So again, we play the one story, two story against each other and make it, make it kind of poetical. And the, this is the uh, front. You can see the garages are incorporated into the buildings. This is the second floor of, you can see the two story elements have bedrooms. So the, the homes themselves have a master suite on the ground floor, two car garage, living room, dining room, kitchen, family kitchen, hallways, and laundry room and all that, and then a basement uh, under part of it. So it's kind of a, uh, what people are looking for when they want to move out of larger houses and stay in the community. So that's what that's for. So uh, I, think it's a, I think it's the responsible thing to do, looking back at Lake Forest's heritage of, of planning, that was based on the natural landscape. People came out here initially to be in the landscape. So our anchor is the landscape. The buildings are solid, simple buildings that 100 years from now, they'll look exactly the way they do the day they are built because there's no deterioration. It's, it's all masonry, stone and brick. The windows are not gonna deteriorate. And the, uh, the roof is, uh, 
is a, is a slate. You can see the materials here. Now, one thing that's kind of, I, it may be controversy, and it, it makes me ask the question too, is this the right thing to do? The slate is not made out of slate. The slate is made out of some chemical material. But it looks like slate. In fact, it's been used, as far as I know, it's been used in Lake Forest. And the reason for that is, if you use real slate, it's very brittle. And over time, the slates start to, maybe somebody has had a slate roof. It, it begins to deteriorate and you have to replace it. It doesn't last forever. Whereas this material looks exactly like slate and it'll never have that problem. It's a lot, it's, it's a new chemical world that we're living in. And, and I know a lot of people, are, and I am one of them, has been used to natural materials. But when a material is better than nature, I think maybe we ought to look at it. So that's an interesting argument. Uh, so welcome your comments, and uh, hopefully we'll have good discussion. And we're happy to take ideas. Uh, we think we have a strong scheme here and look forward to uh, working with you to realize it. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy, do we have staff comments and recommendations? Sure. Uh, thank you, Acting Chairman Friedman. Uh, tonight is, as, as Ms. Cobb said, is, is this is a work in progress that is before you. It is an opportunity for uh, the board pr to provide direction and thoughts, raise questions. You're not going to get answers tonight. Um, and certainly, uh, you will hear comments from members of the public. Uh, this project is, uh, it, it's a large project for Lake Forest. It is uh, really a one-of-a-kind site in the Central Business District. Uh, Ten acres of developable land will probably never be something we see again uh, in downtown Lake Forest. So it is a very important project. Uh, the City Council has worked on this project for a number of years. Uh, they are committed to, to seeing this, pro this property develop. Uh, they are committed to um, a mixture of uh, residential unit types, uh, and they are committed to a high quality development. Uh, the Plan Commission has received a similar introduction to this project last December. Uh, input was provided at that time. This project will be back before the Plan Commission next week, uh, next Wednesday, right here, uh, March 11th. Um, and the Plan Commission, just as a reminder, deals with more technical issues. They deal with zoning issues, they deal with drainage, they will talk about traffic um, and density. Um, your role is really to look at this from a design aspect and, and to look at it based on the design guidelines and the standards that you would normally apply. Um, to look at um, whether the, um, the proposal hangs together as w consistent with the selected architectural style. To look at various elements such as the bays, uh, balconies, entrances, uh, windows, uh, roof forms to, to make sure that those are appropriate. To look at whether this development achieves the right balance of um, consistency uh, without being repetitive or duplicative. Um, your role is, is to look at materials and really understand areas where materials transition from one to the other. Uh, the city's design guidelines do require natural materials. Um, so you understanding, uh, for instance, um, more about what is proposed on the roof. Uh, when this project was presented as part of the initial review process, uh, a slate roof was part of the concept that was presented. Um, we do, um, in Lake Forest, have quite a bit of experience with, with slate roofs. In fact, Market Square, after 100 years, uh, and, and slate doesn't usually last more than 100 years, but Market Square was just re-roofed over the last year uh, with slate. Um, the new owner came in and, and really wanted to be consistent with the original material. So those are the top types of issues that you should focus on, certainly landscaping, exterior lighting as we get to that point. Um, so tonight is really a time to, to raise questions, to um, ask for clarification in, in future plans, and provide input at this early opportunity so that as plans develop, it's really something consistent with what the board is looking for. Thank you. Kathy, for ourselves and everyone else in the room, is there anything about 
the zoning that has an impact on the way everybody should be looking at this development, that the parcel is zoned? In other words, it's not purely, well, if you could just speak to that, I think that would be helpful. Yes, the, the parcel is, is actually zoned, uh, a part of it is zoned for commercial use, which also allows multifamily residential, and another part of it is zoned for uh, residential of a mixed character. So we believe that what is presented is consistent, consistent with the density that's allowed, but again, those are discussions that um, will be more uh, under the plan commission's purview, but certainly your pre purview is, is not so much to talk about density and number of units, but the, the massing of the buildings, the form, how they relate to the streetscape, how they relate to the overall character, and to make sure that over time this will become a new landmark for Lake Forest. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. So at this time we'd like to take public commentary. Uh, please remember that we're limiting each to five minutes and to Kathy's point, please keep in mind that, that our board does not have purview over drainage and grading, engineering, zoning. Our charge is architectural, aesthetic, massing, siting. Uh, I have the, the uh, speakers, those who wish to speak from the, from the audience. Uh, I'd like to call accordingly so that we, we keep a nice orderly pace here. Dean Sundberg, please. And if you would, please speak into the microphone. Be happy to, thank you for the opportunity. Most of my questions I will hold for next week because they include traffic densities, et cetera, et cetera. The comment I have just from looking at what I received in the mail and what I see tonight, uh, impresses me as well designed, but it does impress me as massive. I mean, you've got a four story, as pointed out, and I don't disagree with the architect that different sizes are probably very good. It's just on a 10 acre site, which has a lot of green. Again, Mariani did a good job, I think. But the massing is, to me, very high. I'll talk about traffic and human traffic and all the other things next week, which I think are a major issue. Uh, <clears throat> we haven't talked numbers of people either. So all of that in this, I think, relatively small area uh, is a major concern and a concern that I'll want to delve into uh, basically next week. And I understand that's a more appropriate time for those types of comments. So I appreciate your attendance and your hearing me. Okay. Thank you. Jan Gibson, please. Jan Gibson, 59 East Franklin Place. I own one of the four homes bordering the west side of Laurel Western property. It's a, it's a ranch house. And I sometimes sound like a a worn out record because I've always been for a solid plan for this this development a redevelopment of the property when we discussed the proposal really back or a proposal back in the late 1990s when the plans for Market Square North came before the city I told the Plan Commission in December that I went through my notes from 1999 when Howard Kerr was mayor nearly 16 years ago so this has been going on for a long time. But my concerns haven't changed and the plan still isn't right. Um, I have four main issues and I'm, I'm not going to defer the traffic situation because that leads to something else with the road um, and that has to do with the plans here. Others will discuss this and we'll discuss it at the plan commission next week. But with that many cars and a road going from Laurel to Franklin Place, they had named it Olmstead Lane or something, it really shouldn't go all the way through. Franklin Place, basically all roads go to Western. If you go out on Franklin Place, and I uh, invite you all to come around the neighborhood and walk it and drive it, you'll see what I'm talking about. The, the traffic should not go to Franklin Place. If, if it goes east, then it goes to Western. If it goes west, it goes to Burr, Burr Oak and then to Thomas Place and then to Western. So there's no reason to have a road straight through. 
if you, if you leave the existing entrance onto Laurel and make a dog leg maybe to Western, have another exit or an egress onto Western at the north end where the entrance is on Western, um, then you have that dog leg which actually would probably take care of the clubhouse. Um, you know, it would, it would go past the clubhouse right there. So you could have a dog leg from Laurel to Western and allow traffic within the, in the complex. Um, the, I wanted to talk about scaling, density, and setbacks. Um, I think the plan is almost inexcusable. Uh, I've known Larry Booth for years and he has so much more talent to give us that it almost makes me sad to see the results. The building heights really loom over everything in the neighborhood. Um, at the, and we, we, he talked about all the different heights, which I think is fine, except each height actually adds another story when you take a look at the, at the roof lines. So really what you have across from Crystal Point is really three stories plus one. What you have in the apartments at the southeast corner, you have ba basically four stories plus one. And even where I live on a, in a ranch house, I just looked at the, the uh, plans here, and it's really two stories plus one. So that's, that's quite a bit of height in a, in a neighborhood. The compatibility, I want to just mention something about the pocket park. We have an existing pocket park now in the northeast corner, as you know. And we have yoga groups, we have badminton, we have croquet, we have seniors, we have all kinds of people who are there all the time in, in when the weather isn't inclement. And um, they're talking about maybe having all that pocket park go down on the east side of, of wet, uh, the east side of the, the complex. When you get down to the southeast part of that that property where it says it's 140 feet across or how 140 feet wide, um, the the people will not. We have people from all over who actually visit the pocket park, not just the neighbors. But if you have that pocket park in the southeast corner which is 140 feet wide, I don't think you're going to have people there because it's far too public. You, it's right across from the grill, and that is a very busy intersection. Um, the quality and design and the construction, I don't think you can cut corners on bu building materials and fenestration, and I think that this looks as if some corners have been cut. Um, the details have to be there. I'm concerned about the windows, very much so. I've been leading four programs on our Preservation Foundation about windows, and um, I would really want to see that those windows are first class. I think this plan is modern Gothic, and nothing in Lake Forest is Gothic. Uh, we have Georgian Colonial Tudor, we have Prairie, we have a, a lovely Art Deco house in town. And uh, what I would do is send um, Mr. Booth back to the drawing board, to create something more in keeping with what this neighborhood wants and what will make Lake Forest proud. After 16 years, we need to get this correct. Let's revise and do it right this time. Thank you. Thank you. Stefan Barone, please. <laughs> Is my time already up, Kathy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, my name is Stephen Bruin. I live at 1261 Burr Oak Road, which is right around the corner from this development, so clearly I have a vested interest in what takes place here. And as the first gentleman said, I will not spend time on some issues that I was gonna to discuss today because they're not part of your purview. However, things like mass and scale are. And imagine, if you will, driving down Franklin with three stories plus the extra story that Jan mentioned, on the south side and then Frank, uh, Crystal Point on the north side. It's gonna be like driving down a canyon where you've got the Great Wall of China on either side of you. So despite the fact they've made a sincere effort to at least save the trees on Franklin Place, and I'm assuming that means you're not gonna widen the road as part of that, okay, thank you. Um, it's still gonna be a very closed in, claustrophobic kind of feeling, which it really isn't today, other than the fact that you have trees and the berm on the south side. So I think the mass is just unquestionably not the right thing to do. And that's not just for that one building, it's really for all the buildings, okay? So I'm really concerned about that. And particularly when I consider how much attention and detail you gentlemen pay to those kinds of issues in residential homes that are being built. I know my son built a home last year in Lake Forest and there was a lot of detail, a lot of time spent on the size of the home 
how it looked from the street and things like that. I would like that same attention to detail paid to this project, while it's not owned by an individual and it's owned by the city, I think because of its scale, it demands more attention, not less. And the one other comment I want to make is regarding the design overall. Um, in, in my opinion, and I'm not an architect and I'm not a design engineer or anything like that at all, but in my opinion, the best that could be said about it is that it's really uninteresting, okay? Really uninteresting. I would claim it, or I would claim that it's more desperately boring than anything. And while there may be differences in height, when you look at those buildings as they stretch out, it's just like one big massive building that's a monolith. And that's not what we want for that development because it will not stand the test of time. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Warfield, please. Uh, my name is Jim Warfield, 140 Franklin Place. I speak as a resident. I happen to be the president of that building, and I also am a local realtor. Uh, and it's difficult uh, for me to be here tonight with all those different hats because I have some very strong feelings. I do want to thank you for the opportunity to participate, and I want to thank you for your service to the City of Lake Forest in helping this development come to, to pass. Uh, it's a great improvement over the mountains of melting snow that have been salted by the city. And we look forward to a very productive use of those 10 acres. Uh, I also have to applaud Focus Development for taking the issues that were presented in December and modifying those. It was truly uh, a, a mark of showing how they are trying to accommodate some of the needs and use the input that has been given, and most notably, Franklin Place. Um, what does concern me is what was mailed out to us, the plans that the site plan from Booth Hansen was different than the tentative pl a plat that was presented by Black. Black's plan showed a widening of Franklin Avenue uh, to 88 feet and that would destroy those eight mature trees that are over 36 inches in circumference along Franklin. It's hard to separate traffic from lifestyle and aesthetics uh, because in this plan, uh, traffic is an issue, but also when it comes to move in, move outs, and UPS Federal Express deliveries and how those might be accommodated in the site plan. Speaking to organization of the site plan itself, when you look at what was presented in December, there was a greater variance of the faces of the building and how they perf uh, performed more angles. The exterior uh, at the ends of each building had um, faces that came out from the majority part. When you look at the new site plan, those buildings are much more rectangular with less variation, less shadows and depth and warmth to them. Uh, also, if you could uh, perhaps consider looking at making one of the condos up on uh, Franklin Place next to and adjacent to the condominiums on 140 Franklin. That seems to be a parallel match and with the two-story <laughs> building that the condo is presented as being, one of them being presented, with the added roof, they would match a little more carefully. The other comments I'll reserve for next Wednesday. Um, I do uh, like the 62% green, it matches Crystal Point, but also in addition, when you look at setback requirements, uh, much of the green space is devoted to the interior of the property. So when it does come to looking at uh, codes that are currently on the books. Those have been developed because of certain transgressions in the past, and I would hope that we could maintain uh, at least those same kinds of setbacks that are in the current code. Uh, we realize at Crystal Point we are going to have to adjust some of our own landscaping because of a light pollution or light that would come from cars that exit out of what one time was called Olmstead Lane. 
So we will have an impact on how we take care of our property as well. Again, I wish to thank you for the time. Good night. Thank you. Emily Watts, please. I'm Emily Watts. I have been here six months in Lake Forest. I live at 1230 Northwestern Avenue uh, that faces Western Avenue. Um, good evening to the members of the board. I have a concern in relationship to the design of the exits uh, on Franklin Place uh, in the proposed development. <coughs> The design concern has to do with additional traffic on Western Avenue, and I know we're not talking about traffic, but you said we could talk about design. Um, in terms of the, tra the, the traffic traveling south from the Northwestern Business District, there's actually, if I can use this, Kathy, you want to show me? is Franklin Place. This is the building where I reside, right here. And as you'll note, there is a somewhat slight, but there is an S-curve. Now, the proposed development is to have a lane. Excuse me, could I ask you to pull that microphone over a little bit? <coughs> Thanks. Sure. Does that, is that better? All right. So there is a proposed uh, exit um, road right in here. Now, I think there's like 176 units total something, or approximately, and if just half of them at one time or another during the day exit onto Franklin Place and come <coughs> here, there could be an issue in terms of the design to have that exit right here. My um, colleagues, my friends in the um, Building 5 at 1230 uh, told me that there was an issue with traffic going over the double yellow line at this curve. So I decided to test that out and see if that is indeed the case. So what I did was I made five different periods of observation when there were, all the lanes were clear at that S-curve. 40 out of 49 cars traveled over the double line. Okay? One of them was a school bus. <laughs> now these times were just random. In fact, one of the vehicles' entire frame was over the du double line into opposing traffic. So we have a real design problem from this development. Something needs to be done for a Franklin Place for a better and safer design entrance or exit from Franklin Place from the residents of Burr Oak, Crystal Point, 1301 Northwestern Avenue and the proposed development um, interior road access. Thank you. Thank you. Linda Van Eekhout. My concerns are basically traffic and, and cars. So I'll come back next week and talk about that. But I have a little story to tell you. 
I know about a man, this was many, many, many years ago, that built a beautiful, beautiful house on Green Bay Road. And he had like, I believe for like four chimneys on the top of this house. And the city of Lake Forest came to him and said, you got to take two or three feet out of each one of those chimneys because it's too tall. Just a remark on the four-story building. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Phelps Langtree, please. I'm also from 1230 Northwestern. Um, I was, I'm very much interested in, because they haven't explained how are they going to get the cars into those underground parking places. I was asking before if, if the, if the, you got an entrance off of Western Avenue, and that's just for, I guess, for the, the building, the big four-story building. I, 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 I apparently the underground lots are not connected in other words each building and how are they going to get where are they going to get the cars into those underground lots I'd like to see what were the entrance and the access is to those four underground those, uh, all those all those buildings uh, the the single family homes and the duplexes I can understand though that they're their own garage but but the underground con I was concerned about Larry, would you like to? Yeah, I could answer, clear that up anyway. Um, off of Western, the parking underneath the apartment buildings is connected. And it's a big L-shaped parking area underground. Uh, the clubhouse sits over part of it, but it, it is connected. So all the rental apartments will come off of Western. And likewise, all the uh, condominiums, uh, those two parking areas are connected too. So there's just those two access points. But, but do they come off of, they, they come off of Laurel and, and Franklin? Not, uh, there's only, uh, there's <coughs> only three access points. Laurel and and then that Olmstead Lane. Olmstead Lane, you go north off Laurel on Olmstead Lane and in about oh, 150 feet or 200 feet, you take a right and you go into the garage. You wanna, you I don't know wanna. if it's appropriate to answer that question. We have a slide and can talk through logistics parking. and parking. Well, we can wait until the public comments are done. It would be more appropriate to address that with plan commission. Beth Napoli, please. How's this? Good. Hello. Hi. I'm Beth Napoli. Thank you. Some of my concerns might be better for next week also, but um, I live at 58 East Laurel, which is off the street on Laurel, and Jan Gibson is my immediate neighbor to the north. Um, we've lived in our house almost 35 years, and we moved in in 1980 on the Ides of March. <laughs> and I think, okay, <clears throat> Ides of March, but we've loved where we are. Please been speak a into the microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'm in. I don't know Thank which you. way, so I'm talking to both sides. I'm sorry. Um, as I said, we have loved living in our house. We love Lake Forest. We live where we do because we'd wanted our daughter at Sheridan School, which was wonderful. And um, Jan knows that people have told us, oh, you live in an un unlisted house, and that is exactly how it's been. Um, the plan that we received on Thursday was changed. The four houses that we thought were going, our four houses were going to have single family homes along our lot line. 
They no longer are. The house, the unit that I will look out at from our living room, dining room, family room is the attached, the, the double um, house, so the attached two residences. And to me, that's a row house or a duplex, and the single family homes are on the sides, but I don't know if we will ever see sun again. I think the density in that area, the entire area 175 units that's a lot of people and lastly I should say that today uh, thinking about meeting tonight I drove to the end of our drive and I usually turn right and go to Green Bay but today I turned left because of the meeting it was on my mind and I arrived at the corner and turned right toward town and I thought there are cars everywhere how many cars are here so I turned around and it was 2.36 this afternoon. And on, on the grill on Laurel, in front of the grill and slightly north of the grill, and on the side on Laurel, there were 45 cars at 2.30. So I thought, how can this be? So I counted the cars again, 45 cars and 12 cars parked across um, on the north side of Laurel behind the fence. I think those are workers at the grill on Laurel. So I think that's very crowded. So at 5.30 today, I counted again. Different cars, different people. It wasn't as crowded at the grill, but there were 32 cars. At 6.20 en route here in the dark, I counted again. There were 30. There were 32 and then 36 within the span of an hour. I don't know if they were the same cars. I do not think so. But I don't know where people will park, where their guests will be, and certainly not any business. I think it's overpopulated, so it's too densely populated and really overdeveloped for that spot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ron Peterson. For the sake of time, um, I'll ask why that conversation is under discussed. The only issue I did have was you spoke about the Heritage United. I didn't know if there was any other uh, four-story building to wait for. Kathy, would you mind responding to that? I know that Old Main used to be our tallest building, and, and that was, uh, <laughs> that's no longer in place. Um, mm. I, I think the condo, the Deer Path Inn condos may be four stories, but I, we will get an answer for you. Thank you. Richard Wood. Good evening, Richard Wood. I live at 1032 Northwestern Avenue. Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for the groups that are gonna be involved in what is gonna be a very long process. Uh, the city staff, the boards, which I once served on one, I know how much time you put in, how much you care. Uh, so we thank you for that. Uh, Booth Hanson is a highly respected firm. Larry Booth is a personal friend, and I have confidence that, that all this can get done right. Mariani we know well, they take care of Regents Row, which is our condominium association, and, and focused development, which is new to me, but based on my research, uh, they're a respected developer, they have a very good track record, and I, you know, I want this project to be the right one, to be of the highest quality that can possibly exist in Lake Forest, and most, as important, be successful. It's very important for this project to be successful. I, preparing these remarks, I came to talk about um, what was perceived by many of our homeowners, and we have met and we've talked about this, about a, quote, lack of transparency. And on the good side, I see a package tonight, which I have obviously not reviewed in detail, that gives me a lot of the transparency as far as the design, et cetera, that, uh, that I would have and hoped to expect. But I, I noted on January 20th, Bob Kiley at a finance committee meeting, and I'm gonna paraphrase him, he spoke about 
goals of the, of the community. And he, he said, uh, he was talking to the thinkers on the city council, I think it can be addressed to all the boards. We sometimes, and again, paraphrasing, we sometimes make decisions without all the facts and considerations. Uh, to the board, do not hesitate to speak up. The city staff is focused on this in 2015. Sometimes we, staff, don't present all the facts. We aim and want you to look at all the data, motions, concerns that people have, and we want to be thoughtful in the review of petitions. So I just want to echo that as, as this is really the first, what I would call, substantive board meeting. And, uh, and, and hopefully you can follow the same mantra that, that Bob put up forth. Um, transparency, I, I came, the financial information, and this isn't in your purview, I understand that, but what is the financial benefit to the city? I was gonna ask, is the city's return based on density? Uh, concern if it is, and is it contingent on any future events? Uh, and if the financial details must be confidential, I think we should be, have, have it explained why and know those details. Uh, I think the public deserves to be uh, more informed. I mean, the details there if you do your homework, but uh, how does the city's affordable housing ordinance work? I mean, where, we, 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 I, I think I saw in the packet they've designated which units those are, who gets them, what type of folks are gonna move into those. Uh, but my real concern is density, and that is under your purview. Uh, and, and that goes to, and it takes off on, on an earlier subject on parking and traffic. I happen to go through the intersection, and I'm gonna focus. I, I have reviewed the traffic study that Focus uh, did. I go through the intersection of Woodland and Western four to six times a day. The first time is early in the morning. It's, it's what I call the Lake, Lake Forest High School rush hour. I leave the hospital, take a left onto Deer Path, and I get in the line of what I refer to as the uh, single passenger SUV school buses. And they're, they're all headed to the high school. And we go up to, to the intersection with Green Bay, and you decide, well, do I go left today or do I go straight through the city? And I'm trying to get to Regents Row. And you know the people at high school are thinking the same things. But to move things along, the other thing that's horrible in New York, is, or New York in, in uh, Lake Forest is driving north-south. And uh, I, I did on Monday on the way back from the hospital at 7.30 in the morning, the rush hour, the cycle at Woodland and Western, total of one minute and 43 seconds to do a whole turn. One minute and 26 seconds was east-west, helping those through the high school. 18 seconds was north-south. Uh, sort of incredible, but you know, those of us who come out, we're used to it. We got our 18 seconds, but we have to wait uh, a minute and 30 to get them. Uh, the traffic study says that during this rush hour of high school, and remember someone going from this development south on Western and taking a left under the other path, could be going to the high school, could be going to Sheridan School or elsewhere. The, the traffic cycle says that eight cars will be added. That is, it, it just, it isn't so. I need 30 more seconds. In uh, the impact on School District 67 in the TIF report said there'll be 31 students added to the schools. So that's just, uh, it's just, it's just, that intersection is gonna be a disaster. So anyway, in closing, I think the design, I, I think you really, I'm not, I'm not an expert, I'm not an architect, I'll leave that to others, but I think the density and the four stories is really problematic and we need to address it. And I think uh, we need to make sure that the building design honors the uh, legends of this city. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dick. Marv Farwell, please. I will defer my questions and comments till next week. Thank you. Michael Sorkin. Uh, thank you for the opportunity uh, to speak. My name is Michael Sorkin. I live at 1020 Western Avenue, which is the residential development just, just south of uh, the proposed development. I'm a relative, my wife and I are relatively new 
residents of Lake Forest, and I want to thank you uh, for the transparency and um, diligence to this process. It's the level of detail, uh, attention to detail is impressive. So uh, I'll be quick because I think a lot of the concerns that we have have been addressed by a number of other people. Um, the first one, uh, but I do think they bear repeating. Uh, the first one is traffic, uh, which has been mentioned a number of times. Um, I think the traffic issues are substantial and they're problematic. Uh, you know, the eight car figure that was mentioned, I drive by the intersection every morning and return every afternoon. Eight cars is, it seems absurd. I mean, it really does um, when you add 175 units to this area. Um, and I think the parking, as mentioned by a speaker uh, a few positions ago, um, will also be very problematic. Um, the big issue, as I see it, is uh, the number of units and density. I think the first speaker referred to it as massive, uh, and I think that's what it is. The, the scale of this looks more to me like a college dormitory than it does like the kind of residential housing we would uh, want in this part of Lake Forest. Um, I think there's, on the Laurel side, the proposed units are quite a bit higher than anything that they face and will, will dwarf and tower over them. So while I think the, the development has a lot of nice features and, and some of these ideas are very positive, the green space, the use of underground parking, I think the whole thing sort of needs to be rethought. And some of the other concerns we have will take up next week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ford Campbell. Um, thank you. Good evening. My name is Ford Campbell. Um, I live at 885 Waveland Road, so I might be a bit of an anomaly. Um, in fact, I was very reticent to even speak. Um, I don't think mine is strictly a singular position or a um, self-serving one, but um, I've lived with my wife and family, and now just wife and dog, otherwise known as Lulu, uh, for 28 years. So I'm a newbie by many people's standards. Um, 14 of those years were spent in Villa Turica when we first came here in 87. So we've had our million dollar plus house, and now I live in a Cerny cottage, uh, as I like to call it, on Waveland, um, over in Whispering Oaks. And um, I have to, certainly, and I don't want to sound solicitous, but this is volunteer, and, I, and God bless you. I mean, I, I'm glad you're doing it and I'm not, you know. <laughs> this retirement is tough enough because I find out when I don't want to drive by Deer Path, too, because I never knew that experience having worked for 45 years and suddenly I'm here at a certain hour of the day. So traffic is certainly something that's been said and will be repeated and I think is extremely important and dense. But I do want to applaud the city and this group. Um, whatever, it's zero on the tax rolls, okay? And it's been zero for years, no matter how long this thing has been studied. And for somebody who has chosen to live in Lake Forest, um, I would hope that we have an alternative to stay here because I realize that sometime physically I'm not going to be able to care for my acre, okay? And God bless Mariani, they're wonderful people. They're, they're not currently, but uh, they have been our landscaper. And if anybody is outstanding, and, and what is shown here as far as this green area is just remarkable, um, I'm delighted that this project is being undertaken. I'm delighted that there might be, and I don't think there's gonna be another choice like this. Some have said that you know it will never be again in an area like this for somebody who wants to live here either as a purchase or a rental. And the fact that there's no retail in it, fantastic. And I hope that somehow or other, you know, in the eyes of the beholder, um, along Western Avenue is not the prettiest as far as I'm concerned. And so what I'm seeing here being designed and I called on architects for a number of years, which doesn't make me anything but a guy who called on architects. Um, there's some beauty in that concept, whether it be the green, the park, the this, the that, whatever, whether it looks like uh, this building or that building, I hope can get resolved. And no matter how many stories it is, I think the bottom line is, is that I, I would hope that there would be a blend and a balance. I don't know what the ratios are. I don't know how much they're gonna be. I looked at it in a very practical sense, even though when I had to replace my roof because of the integrity of it, I didn't put on the single shake and I didn't put on the asphalt, I put on the double shake. So it wasn't any cheaper to do it that way. But when I saw slate, I thought, who wants to have slate built into a design when you're gonna have to pay for assessments and maintain it? And I know I'm not gonna live another 100 years for sure, but it's gotta be built into the cost. As far as developers go, they're entitled to a fair profit and only so much can be done of a quality, and we all want the best of both worlds. 
We want quality, no matter where we are, no matter who we are, no matter how big or how small it is. But at the same time, in reality, we don't want to be paying, let's just use the real slate roof as an example, if anybody's going to be alive to be able to put a real slate roof back on after, after Market Square. So I, I applaud the project. I hope and pray that it is something that would have something for everybody and someone other has the, um, the ability to uh, blend and balance. And I'm just glad and grateful it's in your fine hands and their fine hands and, and not mine. But thank you because I'd hate to think that there's just no place else to go. And, you know, we love visiting Florida, but we sure in heck don't want to be living down there um, as we enjoy the beauty of Lake Forest. So thank you for the opportunity to, to share some comments this evening and good luck with the project. Thank you. So all those who have filled out a, a form to speak have spoken at this time. Uh, is there anyone else? One more? We'll take one more. Hi, my name is John Fantasius, and I live you might in 25 years is that Lake Forest is not like other communities uh, nearby. Um, and my comments or my issues, if you would call them those, about the proposal is not, are not uh, specific to its design. They're more contextual in nature, namely where it's proposed to be built. Uh, I, could, I could see uh, the character of this, this project being in other communities that we could name. Uh, which is not the agenda here tonight. Um, uh, the, the intent is also, I think, um, uh, is well intended. Um, that's a double entendre there. Uh, the designer is out, an outstanding individual. I know of, of Larry Booth, uh, and his career, his, uh, his work. It's, it's outstanding. He's a terrific designer. So it's not a fault with the uh, level of talent that's being brought to the project. I think it's the, uh, the agenda for the project is the problem. Uh, what is attempted to be uh, trying to be accomplished in the 10 acres um, and I appreciate that the design motivation or the uh, attempt to make it fit is um, is based on uh, examples of individual buildings in Lake Forest such as an English cottage but I don't believe that when you glue a lot of Eng English cottages together you still have an English cottage you, you have something else 
And that's the problem, is there's something else that I don't see anywhere else in Lake Forest. So um, I'll just close with that as opening comments. Thank you, Fred. Bob? Um, I got some questions. So who should I address the questions to? Can I ask you the questions? Fire away. Okay, great. Um, one, of, one of the things we've got to deal with when we look at these kind of projects are basically the site plan itself, where the buildings are situated, the elevations themselves, and the materials. We're not even near the materials at this point. Um, where my first reservations, and I, I got, and I, this is the question, why did you decide to put a four-story building at the street level and not in the rear? And the reason I'm saying this is because generally speaking, it's nicer to step things up than to mm -hmm. put the biggest building in front and step it away from the street. And I'm just curious as to what your thought pattern on that was. Sure. I'll, can I speak from the model? Sure. It's a little easier. Uh, so the design criteria that was included in the RFP allowed for a four-story Actually, building. Christine, yeah, we do need you to be at the microphone, but maybe someone else could come up and... Um, <laughs> the lovely Larry Boone. Um, the design criteria that was issued with the RFP authorized uh, up to four stories above grade that could be either along western or interior to the site. But the way that we planned the entire 10 acres, we relied heavily on respecting the adjacencies, so which is why you see a three-story condo adjacent to three stories on both Franklin and Laurel, and the two-story condominium adjacent to the two-story homes or one-and-a-half-story homes. Um, and the density, the largest density, the four-story apartment, we chose to put on Western because we recognized that there were a lot of four-story buildings in East Lake Forest, and putting it along the tracks and along the road made the most sense. At the same time, we set it back 140 feet at the corner because as you're on the street and you have that long distance to the building, it diminishes the height. So if it was right up along the road, it would be a similar experience as you head north and see no setbacks, and it's just a very stark contrast between the streetscape experience and the elevation of the building. Set back in this way at this distance, it would read more like a three or three and a half story building from the street. Does that help? It helps in, in a way, but yeah, and we, we, uh, well, I have a different question. I have a different question. I just want to okay. echo one thing. The lowest buildings are to the west, and then they move into the center, and then the three stories help define it, and the four story is at the farthest distance from the single family home. Well, don't, I don't, I, I, I totally understand that's part of it. But for us, what we have to be really concerned about is the streetscape. Sure. Right? In addition to, there's a big criteria under the elevations, which we can't be repetitive. I mean, there's actually a specific standard F is non-repetitive. But when you drive down Western Avenue, heading north, at the street light right there, you can see there's a dip in the road. I'll call it swale, I'll call it a dip, whatever you want to call it. You can see how Regents Row dropped down into the kind of the valley of the dip, and it kept kind of the, the streetscape looking nice. When you drive there and you're at the top of the hill at that street light, and you look up, if you see a four-story building past the grill, it's going to look enormous. You can refrain from, from uh, clapping and participating. So. so my question is, have you taken a look at that? And really, I, I would like you to so that you, one of the things I don't have in the packet is that streetscape, that view line. So I would request you to take a look at that. And then if you flip side and you go on the other side by where Crystal Point is and you start heading south and you come around the curve that the, the nice lady was talking about earlier, you come around that curve, you're going to bump into the same thing because now you're at the high point and that's going to be so much larger than basically the building where the grill is. So one of the things we're going to request is that you show us the streetscape and these buildings in comparison to the neighbors. And that's going to be a big issue. And I, I mean, you guys are smart enough. You'll solve it. I'm not worried about it. But it's something that's going to be really important. And I know you're going to be fighting with 
the rear neighbors, the western neighbors, and I understand that you wanted to reduce the building size in the back over there, I get it. It's just that we've got to be responsible for the streetscape. Absolutely. And that's where we're going to be bumping in on our end. Yeah, I absolutely hear your concern. Okay. We can address that at the next meeting. There's a couple slides that I could speak to as well. <clears throat> um, so why don't I, would you like me to respond now or? Oh, you can do it the next meeting. That's great. Okay, Thanks. perfect. That's it. Bruce? Um, well, a, a reminder for everybody, my, ourselves included, I mean, this is the beginning for us. And so I, from my standpoint, if we're going to be uh, helpful, this is the best time for us to share things that we're going to put energy into as time goes on. So you can be more attentive to those things and, um, and we can move the process along. Uh, the other comment I would make is, Quite a few people came up and talked about things that are specific to the plan commission and we've mentioned it a few times there are certain things within our purview and we are going to be solely focused on those i would encourage you though to share those comments with someplace else because we work in collaboration through kathy plan commission and others for this to be a single collaborative effort um, and if you keep pushing on one and can't do anything you could end up being frustrated or your good thoughts might not be incorporated so i would encourage you to the degree that uh, you've put energy into coming here this evening, share the thoughts the, and the good ideas you had with the Plan Commission um, next week. Um, as we've talked about, uh, we are really going to have to to work a balance on the things that really everybody who came here this evening spoke to, um, and we put a little tighter attention to a lot of details that s some uh, may also bring up. But clearly, I would say that, of course, massing is going to be an issue. And how we define that is going to be challenging. I think the comment on streetscape is important. Um, and if I could kind of think through a balance between how we look at things and some of the comments that were made, um, this design, I think, is very respectful of the people who would be living in this complex. And it makes a lot of sense. And they're going to see value in what is my view when I have a room or a space or in my home. Um, what are my shared spaces? Are they aesthetic? Are they pleasing? And there's real value to that. When they make a decision to move there, those are things that they'll look at. Um, but all of the people here, unless somebody's thinking of moving, um, their perspective is, how does it work in with my neighborhood and, and all the other comments that were made? And I think it's great that there are some shared access points that they could enjoy. But I think something that you'll have to think about, and hopefully we'll be able to be more specific and articulate about um, directions to go but there is a lot of internal space and the more you provide space to the inside that means that basically all the people who walk down any road um, it pushes basically the structures more to their space um, and I don't have an answer for that but I do think it's something to put put energy into um, because the residents also care about the neighborhood broadly and what it looks like as they drive up to it, not just when they go into their garages and get into their respective units. So there may be a little bit of a, a different balance there. Um, I think the point that was made about, uh, and I, I think it's a little premature to get into a three-story versus four-story because that all speaks to massing and detailing. Um, but one way or the other, there's going to have to be a decision made as to if indeed a four-story uh, building uh, makes it through the process, where is it best served? Um, and, and that's a tricky one because um, there is good logic to the four-story building being basically the one furthest to the north that you can't see. And basically you step up to it. So if I'm on Laurel, um, I'm actually seeing lower. So theoretically the one right on Laurel could be two. The one along Western could be the three-story. Um, uh, and then the four-story goes in the back. But Again, we're not here to get into that level of detail, but I do think those are the, the things that we're going to have to look at. And then it, maybe it'll seem a little premature, but I know that we get to it. I, I'm relatively new to this board, but I've been around my colleagues enough uh, and know their expertise that they will come up. And I have to say, as somebody who's very sensitive to architectural designs that are throughout the area, um, as I look at this particular design, I understand what you're trying to relate to. I just don't think the design, as I look at it, does relate to the design that we have in downtown Lake Forest. Um, and I, I'll leave it at that. I just, uh, I think in terms of just the, the amount of windows that are there, the peaking, 
of the roof lines and so forth, as I look at those lines and I look at uh, neighboring structures, I don't know if somebody could look at it and say, I see that you could maybe argue it's somewhat complementary, but it doesn't seem to be consistent. And I think that's something else that as time goes on, we'll, we'll try and be more specific about. But I think it's, it's not too early to put some, some thinking towards that. And that'll, that'll kind of my starting thoughts. Thank you, Bruce. Consistent with my colleagues, massing, siting is ground zero of our purview. And I think we have a lot of work here. I agree with the comments that the four-story building um, conceptually is problematic. I understand that, that the underground parking is extremely expensive. It, it solves a problem with, at great expense, frees up open space, allows for beautiful plant material, park-like setting in some environments. It also, the flip side of that, it requires greater density to support the, the cost. So, so this is going to be a balance it's going to go through a, a lot of permutations. Um, I would encourage a restudy of the massing, the height. I agree that four story does relate to something in excess of 60 feet. Uh, I do agree with the gentleman who discussed the equipment. That is an issue that will need to be addressed here. Uh, we'll be keenly interested in placement of, of equipment. Is it behind the parapets, et cetera, transformers? This, just to, to drill into a few surface specifics, even though we have to, I think we need to get through the massing and the siting and the bulk, but a few architectural specifics. Synthetic slate is a terrific product. However, this is a C of synthetic slate and and I agree that it probably has greater longevity than natural slate which tends to flake over time chip especially in our climate um, however it does not have the character of true slate which there is a precedent throughout Lake Forest of true slate it, it lacks the patina etc and I think that that speaks to the entire scheme of the structures, they lack a patina. They lack a, a, an organic feel. Uh, so that's a defining issue that I'd like to place with you to, to um, address. Uh, minor note, I, know, I noticed on the landscape Plan, which I am not an expert, but I am a landscape enthusiast. It calls for ginkgo trees in, in, a, in a location or two. And, and are those female or male ginkgos? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have female ginkgos here in Russia. They don't grow in the nursery. Okay. <laughs> I thought I could stump Mariani. But... <laughs> so, so to go back, I believe what, what we, what our charge is, I don't believe I know is to is to protect the character, the aesthetic, the timelessness, the neighborhood of of what is built, and this needs to look like it's been here over time, and I just don't see that. That's all I have for now. Thank you. So, with pressing forward. We are here tonight to preliminary basis, preliminary review, gain an understanding of your presentation, listen, understand the comments from, from the public. I think we've had plenty of that this evening. Uh, I believe that this, there will be a development on this site. So make no mistake about that. This is, this is a developable site. And, and I believe that it, it will be an asset to the community in time, but it will be a work in progress to, to, for everyone to come together on that. 
with the understanding that this is a private development as well. That said, uh, Kathy, do we, a motion is, is not in the I would the suggest offing, you it? continue it. Uh, you did open the public hearing, so all of the comments tonight will be incorporated into the record. Um, so if, if you have no further comments, direction, questions, requests to offer, then it would be appropriate to continue the public hearing and uh, we will work with the developer to address the various issues raised and be back in front of you. Okay, I'll move to, I'll move to continue these proceedings and the development until the next available date. Do we have a second? Yep, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you. Thank you. One, one speaker said that it's four stories plus the entry.